Welcome back to the Fast Life Podcast. Thank you guys for joining us. We have a great show with Jeremy from Lucky Strike Designs. He is one of the top painters in the industry. He's uh, got one of the sickest performance baggers in the game, and uh, he's a great friend of mine. I'm happy to have him on this podcast. Before we get into it, let me talk about Simpson Motorcycle Helmets. They are my helmet of choice. I wear them every day, and uh, you should too. Check them out at SimpsonMotorcycleHelmets.com, as well as Simpson Motorcycle Helmets on Instagram. Not only does SNS have everything you need to crank out power from your motorcycle's engine, from exhaust systems to air cleaners and everything in between, they also built the Indian Challenger that has come in first both bagger races. Their focus is optimal power and reliability. Check out their website, sscycle.com, where you can find out more of what they have to offer for your V-Twin. Also, they have a po- podcast. You guys should check out Performance Times Podcast. And lastly, give these guys a follow on the gram at SS Cycle. Lexan Moto has an intercom system for you, the all-new G16. It's a group rider's long-awaited answer to an affordable intercom system. It has a 16-rider comm system, Bluetooth 5.0, and music sharing. It'll keep your group connected while traveling together. This is another great product from the team at Lexan Geared at making motorcycle rides more enjoyable. Check it out at lexan-moto.com where you can apply the Fast Life offer code, which will save you 15%. And as always, you can rest assured that Lexan backs up all their products with the best customer service in the industry. Thunder Max has your EFI equipped Harley Davidson covered with their high quality auto tuning ECMs. I've been running Thunder Max on all my fuel injected bikes since 2015 and I've laid down thousands of miles while their ECMs kept me running smooth. I also run their oil cooler fan, which is available for the M8 Touring models, which took my 131 motor from operating temperatures in the high 300s to the low 300s. You can check out these products at shoptmax.com and use offer code FASTLIFE to save 10% off and follow Thundermax EFI on Instagram. Here's three great companies under one roof. Electric Lighting Co. They have your bike covered from headlight to tail light with a ton of LED lighting options for many different Harley Davidson models. All lighting is backed by great warranties and plug and play options, so you can't go wrong with making the switch or stepping up to Electric Lighting Co. NAMS NAMS Cycle Products has everything you need in the wiring department from full harnesses to connectors. And finally, Badlands for over 30 years has been offering the most reliable and dependable lighting modules in the USA backed by a lifetime warranty. Find out more about these great companies at namscustomcycleproducts.com where you can drop the FL2021 offer code, which gives you free shipping on orders over 100 bucks. That was rough. <laughs> I just woke up like 30 minutes ago. So, you know, it's uh, these are the first words I've said to anybody today. So you're welcome. <laughs> Once again, this podcast is with Lucky Strike Designs. Jeremy, he is a badass painter. He's someone I've admired his paint work for years, even well before I ever got to meet this guy and call him a friend. So really thankful to have him on. He rode his bike from Pittsburgh all the way down to the camp out and uh, actually came to Dallas first to hang out with myself and uh, his other good buddy lives here in town. And uh, we got this podcast done. So check it out. Here it is. Lucky Strike. Hey, guys. You ready to let the dogs out? Fast Life Podcast Life. You can go to bike night tomorrow? Oh, yeah, I'll be there. All right, I'm going to challenge you to do a dance-off. You don't want this smoke. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want this smoke. You don't want, it. You don't want any of this, Ricky Bobby. Yeah. I'm sure there's, like, a big box downstairs we can, like, cut up and put on, like, the sidewalk or something. I got one that I carry with me all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. <laughs> wow. You're my hero. I'm just trying to do the Lord's work out here, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so okay. we good. Yep. Mm-hmm. Wow. So, so did we just talk about your our dance prowess? Yes. On the podcast, they heard it. They heard Everyone. it. Heard it here first. You heard so, it here first. You better keep up your end of the bargain. Oh, well, hundred <laughs> percent. Full send. <laughs> How about you, Jace? You into dancing? No. Uh, all we do is this. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll have to work on that. I mean, you got sex now, you know, show, show some yeah. dance moves. It, you know, I, I like yeah. to live my life like uh, like a community team effort. Yeah. So where I uh, excel, I try to focus on those. And then I have 
team members that pick up the slack that I don't have. Yeah. So, gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. You know, right on. That's how we do, that's how we do things. That's like, fantastic. We're, we're in the club and you know, some, everyone's looking at him, expecting him to do something. He's like, Hey, it's like it's kind of like in wrestling where you tag them in. Yeah. <laughs> so wait a minute. Is there a club in Waxahachie? Uh, no. No. <laughs> no. Buffalo. <laughs> <laughs> Buffalo Wild Wings gets lit, bro. Yeah. That's this thing. Yeah. That's amazing. Shit, man. Thanks for riding your bike all the way from Pittsburgh. Fuck yeah. How was that? Uh, it was fun. It was about twelve hundred miles uh, total so far. Mm-hmm. Um, Went to uh, St. Louis for the first leg and uh, saw our buddy uh, Insta Havoc Kyle Mm -hmm. and um, then got hammered with rain the rest of the way till, uh, I don't know. Which way did you go, like the straight south through uh, into Little Rock or did you go cut through some of the... Yeah, it it took me out of St. Louis and I think I caught like the majority of the lower half of Missouri Mm -hmm. or Missouri, I guess. I was saying it wrong forever. Um, And then I got into Oklahoma and I think I was on Route 69 which I kind of laughed as soon as I got on there, Uh, you know, just straight 10 year old level. And um, I was on there for like 200 some miles going through all those little towns. Did you go like Tulsa and shit like that? Uh, I went around Tulsa, like the Southern part, I think. Um, So you probably passed not too far. Which high would you come down on 75 or 35? uh, 75, I think. Yeah. So you're literally probably past close to where the camp is going to be. Yeah. Yeah. That's what, uh, what Jetty was telling me is I probably just rode past the, you stay at your buddy's house in Addison. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. My best friend still lives here. They're, they're looking at, uh, well, not looking at, but they uh, bought a house. Excuse me. I think, uh, Carrollton maybe. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Um, they're going to be down here for the duration. So, so I'll probably be making a yearly trip and just kind of planning around the camp out every time now. That's a good idea. So, well, shit, man, it's, uh, I mean, it's the first time you've done it solo, though. Last year was a Degenerates tour. Yeah, exactly. On the podcast. Yeah, and then the, the first podcast was... Uh, Daytona. Was, yeah, Daytona. That was shit, what, three, four years ago? 18. Yeah, so yeah. shit, yeah. The first, doing the first one by myself. So how, how, much, how much has, like, shit just changed since you've kind of gone... I mean, I, I don't remember what we talked about in the last, last podcast, because I know that you had stopped working at PPG mm-hmm. at that point. Like, how has that transition been, like, going full-time on your own and pursuing, you know, the custom paint side of your career? Yeah, I mean, um, after PPG officially uh, got rid of me and uh, a bunch of other trainers, Mm -hmm. um, I tell people it's like I'm a real fast car with no tires uh, because, like, I don't have, like, a a physical shop of my own just yet. I'm Mm -hmm. still trying to work through that and, um, you know, but still the work's coming through. And and I'm very fortunate to have a a very good friend of mine that has a custom car shop with a booth in it. And uh, I've been bumming out of it. But, um, you know, it's just business is crazy. Helmets are crazy. Bikes are crazy. I mean, everything's going very, very good. Yeah. And um, but, I mean, it's just, you know hard to to get a, a grasp on it right now yeah and um it was kind of funny uh lucky strike designs has been in business for 15 years mm-hmm. this year and um you know it's like everybody that i tell that to they're like well i thought you worked for ppg i was like well yeah but i've been also doing lucky strike for so long yeah. that it was just never a, a full-time gig until now and um now it's you know all hands on deck and and we're gonna try to make a something of it so well i mean it's been awesome like seeing i mean the helmets you've been putting out and uh you're banging them out pretty quick, though. I mean, I'm trying. Like, I mean, you need to slow down because you're making me look kind of bad. Bro. <laughs> says, says the guy that did like four murals and you know yeah. portraits in the course of a week. But that I I did. Uh, you know, I sometimes I can turn a switch on mm-hmm. and go into just straight fucking like tunnel vision hustle mode and just knock shit out. Yeah, it usually happens when I travel to do paint work. Like when I go out of town and there's nothing else going on, I'm able to like laser focus on like doing the job. But yeah, knowing like. The camp out's kind of a, uh, you know, it's kind of a, a cutoff, right? Like, and by getting certain amount of shit done before the camp out, it frees, it makes me not have as much stress at the camp out about what I need to do after the camp out. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yep. So, because I mean, after the camp out, I have five weeks or actually four weeks until I go on the road to Maine mm-hmm. on the bike trip. And so there's fucking 20 helmets downstairs. Yeah. Uh, there's two bikes in the shop that need to get painted. And uh, those aren't all going to happen before I go to fucking Maine. So, yeah. Well, um, and that's, uh, I was talking to a customer before I left for here. And because, um, you know, people still look at guys like you and I, and we'll, we'll count Sachs because he's awesome. Um, that go like, 
you know, you're riding your motorcycle to Texas from Pennsylvania in April. Yeah. And um, I'm like, yeah, it's taking a week off. Need to kind of kind of recharge the batteries a little bit. And uh, he kind of made a comment. And he was like, well, who's going to work on, you know, my, my helmet whenever you're gone? Like, I kind of need it. I'm like, no one is. So, like, it's still April in Pennsylvania. Yeah. It's still raining every other day. I'm like, you'll get it done, you know, plenty of time. You'll be fine. Riding season will come here in, you know, May. And the world will continue. But I'm... To the yeah. point now where it's like I need a little bit of a breather and a little bit of a break. And I don't know if you do this, but that's why I only when I do helmets for people, I only do brand new helmets bought from me. Yeah, that way, it's not like their only helmet. Mm-hmm. Because you know, you know, there's that one thing. It's kind of like when I feel like customers ask me, "Hey, when, when's it going to be done?" It's kind of like your old lady asking, "Hey, what time are you coming home tonight?" I'm like, I don't fucking know. It might be a, a rager of a night, so it might be four a.m. Yeah, but if it's kind of lame, I'll probably be back home at like ten. You know. Mm-hmm. And that's the same thing with the helmet or with doing work. It's like, I know that I know that like I grew up in the paint world and the whole idea was a good painter was obviously quality, a fair price and reasonable time. Right. Yeah. But then you kind of get to this point where you kind of cross over this hill and then it becomes more about the work you're doing and less about meeting these little frivolous rides and events. And it's like, man, I'm, I'm really creating something here that, that I think, I think and I hope that in 20 or 30 years, if I don't do this anymore, they'll have value, Mm -hmm. right? Oh, that's a fast life helmet. Fuck, man. Like, yeah, I'll I'll buy it for that much or I'll I'll give you twice what you had it done for, you know? Yeah. And, um, you know, it's like you get customers that are cool with, you know, like, do you really want to... Do you really want a guy to do art on your bike? It's like a tattoo, right? Mm-hmm. Do you really want to have an argument with the guy before he does a tattoo on you? Yeah, and and that's the one thing. Like I've I had to fire a customer. Yeah, and um, because it just his his expectations were unrealistic, and it's not even the fact of like the work I couldn't do, um, or you know subject matter or whatever. But it was like he wanted it within a week, and by the way, like it has to be perfect. It has to be for this amount of money. And, you know, it has to be, you know, this, 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 and this. And uh, it just got to the point where I'm like, dude, I'm just not even into it anymore. Yeah. And um, he kind of got pissed whenever I told him no. And I'm like, you don't understand the the level of art that goes into anything. A helmet, yeah. a bike. I mean, hell, the cabinets in your house, whatever. And, you know, I told him, I said, I'm, I'm basically creating something from nothing. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not like you're buying a helmet that's already got half the graphics done. Yeah. It's a gloss black helmet that I have to create this from nothing. And if I'm pissed off at the world and want to murder somebody, then you don't want me painting your shit or I'm just going to turn yeah. it super fast, knock it out. And then it's not going to be, it's not going to look good on me. And it's not going to be what you really want. man. Yep. And I, I got to really be into like a project, um, you know, for me to do the best work. Cause again, it's, you're creating Mona Lisa. It's, you know, it's so much of your time, right? Mm-hmm. Like when you're, when you're painting a helmet or painting a bike or anything, like it is so much of your day. Like I, what do you think, uh, on average, a helmet of mine, if you add up the total hours that I have in one, it could be anywhere from 40 hours to 80 hours in a helmet. Yeah. That's two fucking work weeks. Right. Yep. But it's spread out over time to make it work. Maybe not 80 hours, maybe like 40 hours realistically, but on a bike, like you can easily have a hundred hours in a bike. Yep. Not like flag hours, like, oh, it took me an hour and a half, but, you know, I get three hours for it. No, like, motherfucker, 80 hours in doing this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's 80 hours of my life that I'm focusing on this, and for 65 of them, you were a fucking cunt. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, that doesn't make me happy. Then I go home, I'm I'm mean to my old lady, and I I, I just spank my kids for no reason or some (laughs) shit. You know what I mean? (laughs) I told you to clean up your room. Timmy, come here. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, I, I actually started kind of not punching in, but like kind of monitoring how much time I have in the last couple projects. Mm-hmm. And um, like that red uh, carbon performance bike that I, I did for my, my good friend, Joel. Mm-hmm. I mean, I had almost every bit of 100 hours into that bike. Fuck. And, um, you know, all the stuff that, you know, we did. I mean, like I took the, the Curtis Hoffman tank skins that he's now selling. They're carbon fiber. They look dope. But I went full retard and I body work the edge underneath yeah, of it so, so like I, I sanded all that down body worked it so i mean it feels like a normal tank and um you know it's just stupid shit like that where i didn't really have to do that and an average customer probably won't get something like that but um you know it's my boy's bike it's you know no holds barred yeah. and uh you know we painted the bst wheels they got pinstriped you know i mean just a ton of shit happened with that bike and um you know, at the end of the day, you know, he got a hell of a deal because it's not like I'm going to charge my homie, you know, yeah, 
Nine grand. Don't up. say that because then everybody's gonna try to be your homie. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You I got I, mean? I got too many friends. Hey, dude, we it rode is. once together. We're friends. We're yeah. boys. Yeah, exactly. So I, I expect no bill from you whenever you pay my helmet in five years. All right. <laughs> Again, Sax is a witness now. So, yeah. um, but I mean, it's just you know nobody understands that that's not in the business, and yeah. and it's hard to communicate that a lot of times with with customers that you know again don't understand it. I mean, I don't understand how to do heart surgery, but I hope when that day comes and I need it, my doctor is pretty cool. Yeah, you, you don't know? be a dick. Was like, bro, like. <laughs> I got a yeah. fucking. I got a movie to go to, man. I got to, shit to do, man. <laughs> you know, King Kong and Godzilla's out. I gotta get get that ten thirty appointment. You know. But yeah, that's that's kind of the one thing that I try to. You know, right now, man, I feel like I, I've been I've done a really really good job, or I've been fortunately lucky that most of my clients and customers that I do work for are all on the same page. Yeah. And so, you know, like I want these helmets and I want these projects to leave the shop as fast as possible, but. You know, I know that whenever I start this job, then I'm in it for 40 hours. Yeah. So sometimes it's like waiting for the right time, knowing that you have 40 hours to go hard on it and not like you start on something and then the next day it's your son's birthday. So you can't focus at all. It takes you off that 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 flow mm -hmm. of doing something, you know, and and a lot of people would say that, oh, that's just excuses, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, no, that's the difference between the work that I do and the work that you do that put us in some kind of level of in the custom paint industry yeah, because we learn how to say no and focus on the jobs that we know and we know how to do it. We've been doing it for fucking 20 years. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So we know what this is. We've been here before. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then again, like I, I can't say much about like the, the customers that I have. I mean, they're, they're all awesome in their own right. But like I said, it seems to be like the, I don't know. I call, I call it that instant gratification world that we live in. Yeah. Where some of the customers that don't know me, you know, see, Instagram or Facebook or whatever, and they're, you know, maybe getting into the motorcycle world or, mm -hmm. or whatever. And again, they're just not quite familiar with it, that those are the ones that you almost have to like educate more or less yeah, yeah. on, you know, Hey man, I'm again, creating something from nothing. And it's, it is what it is. You know, you yeah. can text me all you want, but I probably won't respond to you in at least three or four days. And yeah. you know, sorry, dude, I'm, I'm busy. It's, it's one of those, the other thing that, that gets weird and I feel like a douchebag for saying it to customers, but like, you know, we, because we were getting so many requests for helmets, that's when we started saying like, Hey, we're not taking any used helmets in. Mm -hmm. you, you have to buy a brand new helmet from us. Yeah. And then of course that leads up with, I just bought a brand new helmet. Can I just use that? I'm like, I'm sorry, man. Because right behind your message is four more messages asking for the same kind of, you know, job Yeah. and are willing to buy a new helmet. You yep. know what I mean? Yep. And so it's like, it's not that I want to be a dick, but it's just like these things are putting, I'm putting these kind of like hoops in place to kind of be floodgates mm -hmm. so that I don't get overwhelmed, which I, I feel like I am now, but fuck. It's like most of the customers I'm, I'm doing helmets for, you know, Brian homie himself. Yeah. I still got two helmets on the books. He just texted me a while ago and wants another one. Like that dude's going to put my, my kids through college, man. I'm, yeah. I'm taking care of that dude. Yeah. And, and it's the same way with me. Like Brian is awesome, you know, and, and I got two helmets for him to do as well. And uh, I mean, he's, probably one of the best customers I've ever had. And I've never met the guy in and person. He it, and and he, he's had some issues with some other painters, but you know, cause it, it, all he wants is just like, just, just answer him. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yep. And he'll keep you, he'll keep you f like, if you have an idea, he'll, he'll let you do it. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's like, uh, I, I think it's kind of funny cause I think me and you have painted the most helmets for him. Like yeah. I think I'm on maybe four, you know, soon to be five and six. Yeah. And I think you're probably on like 10 at this point. I think, I think I'm on nine and then I have three more. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, you know, like you said, I mean, it's more communication, which again, I'm, you know, yeah, not great, but I'm also not terrible at like some of these other guys that, that we've talked to. And I mean, he just has an idea or like I'll throw something at him. Like we're doing a helmet kind of like his uh, cartoon one that we did. Love that helmet by the way. <laughs> and, and that was awesome to do yeah. like all the, the old school cartoons, but now we're doing a, a cancel culture cartoon helmet. <laughs> so, so uh, okay. I'm interested. In this. Yeah. I, I mean, I was like, okay, you know, continue. And he was like, what if we do like Pepe Le Pew, Let's do Jessica Rabbit and like some of these other cartoons. All the, all the, the cartoons. Been yeah, canceled, yeah. All yeah. The, the ones that like we all grew up with kids watching. No one, you know, yeah, Pepe Le Pew was creepy. But, you know, again, I'm not some insane woke person that Pepe Le Pew offends me every day. Yeah, like we need Pepe Le Pew to let kids know that these people exist. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, you know? Mm -hmm. and and this is wrong. And, you know, we, again, we move on with our lives. Right. But um, so he was like, let's do all those. And I'm like, well, let's take it one step further. I was like, what about mug shots? 
Like, let's do mug shots of all of them and then put the reason why they were canceled. So it'll be like <laughs> Jessica Rabbit, like holding a, a number, you know, plate by yeah. her face. And it'll be like, she's too sexy, you know, <laughs> yeah, and yeah. Uh, Pepe Le Pew, you know, just just being grabby, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so like, like we're just going to do now like an anti cartoon version of that helmet as all the cancel culture, you know things that's that's and uh insane. i was like that, that that's fantastic like that's that's one but of that, those that kind of project it's it's like fuck i can't wait to start on that exactly because you know I mean? it's got your balls rolling yeah <laughs> uh, i mean i feel got like that that's that's rolling, fair got man. my balls rolling and and brian if you're listening to this uh I apologize for the balls rolling yeah but um dude i feel my balls rolling yeah i was like man, I, was like, I got a tingle in my thumbs you know in but um thumbs. but at, at, and at the same time like we have a helmet that he had an idea for, and it just was hard to kind of, you know, lay it out right. Yeah. It was like, Brian's Native American. Yeah. And uh, he was like, what do you think about doing, like, a cockfighting helmet? <laughs> and I'm like, sure. Fuck yeah. Let's, yeah. let's do that. But it, it was hard to lay out the chickens in a way that, like, you weren't looking at the asshole of one without seeing, like, the face of the other. You know, yeah. it's just hard to lay it out right now. So I kind of told him, I said, let's kind of put that on the back burner so I could kind of wrap my head around how to make, you know, chickens fighting on a round ball not look weird. Yeah, yeah. And um, so I told him, I said, we'll, we'll just put that on the back burner. And I said, the helmet that we're doing now, like, we'll just shift gears and do the, the cancel culture one. And, uh, you know, super pumped. And, I mean, I'm going to have crazy hours into that thing because I'm just going to probably hand paint, you know, yeah, 90% of it. And, um, but, again, you know, never – says anything about timelines never says anything about the bill right, yeah i mean nothing he just he's, he's down a for perfect cool customer shit. In, exactly in the, most, in the most sense of the word so. yeah and then he sends me pictures of like his house with like yours and my helmets just all over yeah. the place and i'm he's like, like it's a like helmet room i think he's working museum. On. yeah you know so he he used to collect bikes but i think he just collects helmets now well and, and, and i think he's still kind of has like an ass load of bikes yeah but now it seems like I said me and you were the the only ones that return his call text whatever and we we paint like i said i'll probably be half a dozen helmets by the end of the year at this rate yeah you know so i mean he's he's a great customer like i said the, the, for me it's kind of a it's it's a it's tough because i want to i want to try to get my helmets like dispersed to so many people that want them but like i said you you start to build these relationships because i have like four or five dudes that collect helmets for mm -hmm. me right and so every like my other good buddy Winton has a uh, at least five or six, and every he wants one for Daytona and Sturgis every year. So that's two helmets a year for him. Yeah. And all his buddies are rich as fuck, and now they all want helmets for every two events. So it's like eventually you're like fuck, man. Like, you know, how do I do? You know, I still want to be able to do that helmet for that dude that just saved his money up. Yeah. And is like so stoked to have one, right? Like I don't want to get to the point where. It's only for the elite dudes that can afford this stuff. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Um, but at the same time, it's like it, I never in my wildest dreams would have thought that my career would have go from motorcycle paint to helmet paint. Yeah. And and I think the because, and again, one of my very good friends asked me, you know, why I paint so many more helmets now. Because I mean, like I would do a couple every now and again, you know, it never was to this extent. And, um, you know, I feel like the, the people that get the helmets are also the people that might not necessarily be able to afford to build or paint a bike. Yeah. But can, yeah. Sh you know, sling out 1500 bucks, two grand, whatever on a badass helmet that's still just as personal as... A bike, you know, a bike. Yeah. and um, probably more personal because at that price range, you're not looking at it as a uh, as an investment to where like you're going to get your money back out of it, right? It's like, no, I just want this badass thing that I'll never sell. Exactly, like a handmade knife or some shit like that. You know yep. what I mean? Yeah, and and that's a, the big thing. I mean, and I think that's why we're seeing such a transition in in the motorcycle helmet business. Is you know, helmets aren't like automotive. You yeah. know, automotive helmets, man, you drop $2,000 on just a helmet, let alone a paint job. Yeah. And, you know, I think the, you know, Poland, you know, he has that niche of doing yeah. a lot of automotive racers where their money is into their helmet because they got a wrap on their car. So, you know, what are they going to spend or, or find something that's yeah. personal to them? And, um, you know, again, I'll paint helmets as long as people want to spend money for them. And they don't take up 8 million square feet of a shop. So yeah, And one gallon of clear goes a long way. Hell yeah. You know, but at the same time, man, it's, uh, you know, I, I've been trying to work with Bell to get them to uh, start offering some replacement parts. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it, it was a long effort working with Simpson to get them to do that so that we could have the trims to kind of replace it. Because we are charging quite a bit of money to paint these helmets. And you don't want it to, like, 
you want it to look like it came from the factory that way. Yeah. Fresh rubber, not like a taped edge. And uh, then it becomes a learning curve, right? Because you got to learn how to take these things apart and put them back together perfectly. And yeah. you're playing with super glue on custom paint, right? Yep. So it's a very... It's a very hard place to play. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, trust me, I want him to learn how to do it. Sa Saxon to learn how to do it. But it's like one of those deals that, like, I know I can do it. And I know yeah. that, you know, it's weird because, like, I have a hard time letting go of certain roles that I do. Because if I fuck up, then it's, you know, you, yeah, all right, I, I, I know how to fix it. But yeah. it's like when he fucks up, it's like motherfucker oh my god i should have did my you know what i mean like it's a different thing in your head like and it's not fair to him yeah you know because he's still learning but it's just one of those things so it's like learning how to give up those roles if you will mm -hmm. is tough you know but what at, i mean but at the same time you know you make him sand and buff one of those like fingerprints of super glue on a paint job it'll be the last time you ever do that yeah because it's a motherfucker getting that shit off sometimes yeah like, I, I hope it. I don't burn through all of this now because I stuck my finger in that super glue. Like, this is going to so, be great. You've always been in the bikes, man. Like, that's always been clear. But it just, you know, we talked a little bit about it last time when you and, uh, and uh, you know, Hawkeye and Ben were here. But it, it's awesome seeing how you've just fully embraced the motorcycle culture now. And you're actually not just a painter in the custom paint or in the, in the motorcycle scene. Like, you're a dude on a bike riding across country and – you know, doing rad shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, and I think the, the big kind of spark, if you will, was whenever PPG changed yeah. my life pretty much at that point. Uh, cause at that point, you know, PPG was a place that if you got a job at PPG, like you retired from there. Yeah. And, um, at the time I, I always thought, you know, I'm gonna have a nice long career here, have a pension, have all that fun shit. And then, uh, whenever the whole pandemic hit and PPG, you know, shifted gears and got rid of a lot of the, the, in my opinion, the people that actually knew how to paint, yeah, um, you know, it, it became one of those things where it's like, you know what, fuck it, you know, what else do I got to lose at this point? And that's yeah. whenever we rode here uh, for the Degenerate Tour, um, you know, and then we went back home and then rode to Sturgis, yeah. and then you know we rode to Virginia Beach, we rode you know pretty much as much as we could. Did the, uh, and, the uh, V Twin Tour last year? Yeah, did the V Twin Tour to, to Tennessee? Um, you know, so I mean, I, I think once that kind of shift mentally you know you almost have to kind of be there to do a trip like this or again yeah. to Sturgis or whatever and um you know it was kind of funny whenever I got on my bike uh leaving Pennsylvania it was 41 degrees cold as shit I had 70 layers on and uh I kind of looked at my uh my GPS and I'm like oh the first leg is only 600 miles oh, that's not bad yeah. and you know truck to St. Louis and um you know I think now you know I, I'm kind of enjoying riding a motorcycle way more than you know whenever i had the big wheel bike or mm -hmm. you know again just doing local bike nights and all that shit uh now it's you know fuck it where, your, where do you want to go in your limp biscuit phase well see i didn't have a limp biscuit phase i had the like frosted tips like uh justin timberlake okay oh, shit. oh yeah yeah so i mean it was like super close on the sides and spiky so That's, you didn't do it all for the nookie <laughs> uh i mean it was more like a dmx kind of like you know, rolling kind of thing. <laughs> Roll, yeah, rolling. yeah, exactly. Dude, I'm already, I'm getting warm. I think we need to turn the AC back down. <laughs> I told you it wasn't 70 degrees or 75 or whatever. Sax, what'd you do? Did you turn it up for us, fat guy? Turn the heater on, bro. Uh, I just turned it up. It's literally up one degree. My man boobs are sweating. <laughs> but, but yeah, I mean, so I, I enjoy lines. riding the shit, man. Yeah. It's it's a good time. Yeah, for me, it, like it. If, the riding thing, so this is, like, the weirdest part about it. Sometimes I have a hard time, like, accepting it. But, you know, growing up, trying to be a painter, it's all about art, right? And you, mm -hmm. you're the same way, I know, because yeah, the first time we hung out, you're drawing on the iPad all day long. Like, it's a passion, right? But then motorcycling became this, like, uh, non-stress-related passion. Yeah. Like, there's stress in it, but not, like... Art, art stressful because you got standards you're trying to mm -hmm. get to, and and there's all these goals and there's all these steps and the the ladder to success is so it's so complicated, right? But riding was just like this is fun, this is like freeing, yeah. You know? And and I think that's the the big thing for me, like on this trip is like coming up, I'm gonna have some some giant decisions to make yeah. uh, for not only my personal life but business as well. And um, you know, I don't know about you, but there were. Uh, probably I'd say 200 miles where I just didn't have the radio on, didn't have the Lexan on, just 
paid attention to where I was going and just kind of rolled. And, and I kind of get to the point where, you know, I kind of tell people it's like almost searching for clarity, yeah, dude, you know, where I'm just and like this trip, I'm by myself the whole way. I might ride back with a bunch of guys, you know, from the camp out. But I mean, like this first trip down, you know, Steve's bike was blown up. Ben's finishing his bike. Yeah. Uh, my buddy Joel's, you know, stuck working. So I was like, fuck it. I'm getting on the bike and I'm leaving. You know, I don't have anybody with me. It's my schedule and, and we're done. The solo trips, man, they really do. Uh, I, I love them. I think everybody needs to do a solo trip um, for the sake, the sake of like, like you just said, man, there's this. There's this like figure your life out like thing when you're doing a thousand miles, you know what I mean? Like yeah. you're thinking about so much shit and you're just like figuring things out and you're working out all the, you never really have time in your day to day schedule to work out all the narratives of an idea. Yeah. Like, well, what if this happens? What, well, what? And they say, oh shit, I'm, I'm riding a bike. I need to pay attention. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. So, and, and that's a big thing. Like, uh, you know, my, like my best friend living here in, in Addison, I mean, I got to his place last night, probably like. 1045 from doing almost 700 miles from St. Louis. And, um, like here recently, like I don't sleep real well, you know, anxiety's kicking. My mind's always running, you know, a hundred miles an hour. And, um, I get to his house and I mean, I get to bed after a shower and I mean, I slept awesome. Yeah. Like it's been, I haven't slept that good in in a long time. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, again, I think a lot of it was the 700 miles I did, but at the same time, it was almost like that, you know, compression that we're all under, just getting lost whenever I was on my bike and mm-hmm. you know, just, just had a good old time. Man, like the, the idea of like when I'm on a trip, like what you're doing right now and I, and it's over and it's on the way home, I'm so excited to go back to work. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, oh man, that one project, like it's almost like you got all the, the doubts out of the way and now you're looking at this project, like, fuck, I can't wait to start on that thing yep. or this helmet or that helmet or whatever. And it's like, you know, to, to your point of the customer that's wondering why, who's going to work on your, their helmet. It's like, Man, like, I feel like if more people in our industry and more people on both sides, whether it's paint, selling, building, whatever, bikes, um, I, I think you'll everybody will find clarity in, in just the life of being in this motorcycle industry. Yeah. Right? And then when you go back into it, it's just so much more... You, you just kind of decompressed all that bullshit and you're ready to kind of take on the next wave of bullshit. You yeah. know what I mean? Yep. With a, with, with like a clear bag, like you emptied your cart, your trash can on, on your desktop or some shit. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And that's the, the one nice thing. I mean, like, and the, like I used to get super pissed whenever it would like call for rain or I'd get caught in the rain. And, um, like I pulled underneath an underpass, you know, whenever I was leaving St. Louis and got dumped on for an hour. And like, it's, it's almost like that weird, you know, like, dad bullshit that you see on like you know the worst day of fishing is better than the best day at work yeah and i was like man like i'm it's raining who cares you know watch your speed and and we're still going you know it's still a good day on the bike and and again had a had a good old time but then whenever i got into oklahoma and the sun finally came out and it started warming up and i you know took my jacket off and like wrung out my shoes i was like maybe i should pack like three pairs next time instead of just two yeah (laughs) so (laughs) but it it is I had, I had a rough time on the California trip, but I think I did it to myself uh, by jinxing myself, by talking so much shit to everybody going to Daytona Yeah, that I just pretty much made my California trip a, uh, wasn't miserable, but I, I dealt with a lot of weather challenges. Yeah. Yeah. A lot, which is weird because California is pretty, I just, every year in like that February to like early April is kind of like their, their rain season. Yeah. You know what I mean? And uh, they're constantly getting like storms passing through and, the weather's never predictable. One day it's 50 degrees. Next day it's fucking California weather. You yeah. Know? But I don't know. I still had a good time. I met some cool people. Dude. This one dude is actually on the road right now. I uh, met him in Monterey and he's riding with Joe Kidd and, and some other homies down from the, to the camp out right now. And I'm like, yo, like that's, that's fucking awesome, man. Yeah. I, like we had drinks together in Monterey and now we're going to have drinks together in some fucking, you know, hole in the wall part of the America in Oklahoma. You know yeah. I mean? Like that's cool to me. Yeah, exactly. You know? And that's the, the one thing, like why, like I said, I kind of plan this to, to hang out with like my best friend. And like I said, I'll probably just make it a yearly trip now is, you yeah. know, come to the, the camp out, you know, hang out in Dallas for a couple of days. And, um, you know, I, I enjoy seeing everybody that's, you know, again, like-minded people. Yeah. And, um, you know, the one thing about Daytona this year was it was awesome. You know what I mean? But Daytona is not a, a rally you go to ride like Sturgis or any of those. Yeah. But you know, again, it's just hanging out with the homies and, you know, 
having drinks or hanging out or, or whatever. And, it's like um, this is the new way to be friends with people where they don't live in your city. So you just like over hype up the fact that you're going to hang out with this dude for three days. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's like Daytona, the fast life camp out or, or Sturgis or whatever. It's like, this. Yeah. It's my best fucking friends. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you only see them for a couple of days. Yeah. And that's how you're able to, it's like, no, I'm not going to go that way. <laughs> <I'm not. laughs> but, but see, I think what it is, is it's like your, your local people that you see on a regular basis, like they're your, your boys or whatever. Yeah. But like seeing people, you only get to see once a year. I mean, you almost have to like take it to the next level. Yeah. You got to be know? on. You can't, exactly. You can't like lazy, you know, posy, whatever the fuck you can't just bullshit your way through that. Exactly. Like and I got to be ready to fucking go hard with this dude. Yeah. And, yeah. and I feel like it's the, the, you know, kind of, business of the motorcycles that we're in now where most of us you know that are kind of in like this performance you know kind of culture if you will none of us are really douchebags like i legitimately i feel douchey sometimes i mean i so do so do i and then yeah. you know but i've like majority of us it's very it's very inclusive and it's very welcoming um the price of admission is not that hard yeah you know what i mean but you definitely weed out a lot of weird motherfuckers that just don't fit the fit the bill, you know. Yeah. But like I, I I feel like I legitimately enjoy hanging out with these guys. Yeah. You know, like you, Kyle, you know, meeting Mark Norton, you know. There's there's just a whole ton of guys that are in this kind of, you know, performance culture. Again, yeah, we'll accept pretty much anybody as long as you're not a giant asshole and you know or like, a vulture. So like one of the yeah. things that we're dealing with is like um now that the performance bike thing is like, or at least the bagger side of it, I know performance bike's been around forever, but this little thing that we're doing called performance baggers where the bars look like this, uh -huh. you know, just that world that I'm talking about, not all you other motherfuckers, but just this one. Yeah. Ever, the whole industry wants a piece of this pie now. And Correct. whether it's because there's a lot of money in it or there's a lot, or it looks like there is and there isn't, I don't know, but a lot of people want in. Yeah. Right. And so we're seeing a lot more of the people that made the other industries not great mm -hmm. starting to plant roots into this and you can already see their their fuckery starting to de like degrade and it's like all it takes is one brand who is a douchebag who comes in and starts talking about someone that's been around here for a while yeah and their followers start becoming that their guy yeah right and now we're the, we're all friends and having a good time but now we got these fucking cucks over here yeah coming in and acting like assholes yeah and we're like well man y'all need to calm like right now we can manage it like jeremy dude you're being a fucking cunt right now dude calm down yeah but these dudes we don't know them you know what i mean they're not part of it they don't they don't want to be in the circle yeah they got their own circle and that's the, the one know? thing like i've seen in the the carbon fiber business is like every time i see a post on Instagram, Facebook, whatever, of like, you know, our carbon fiber parts don't have, you know, fiberglass inside. These guys do, and they'll like cut a fender in half or some bullshit. A waste. And, and it's like, first off, if you're buying a carbon fiber fender because it's the lightest on the market, that's great. But usually if it's lightest, means it's gonna crack, be shitty, you know, not fit real nice. But at the same time, like I sit back and be like, you're bitching about two grams of fucking weight on a motorcycle that still weighs 600 pounds, even if you do 100% carbon, yeah, and that's of, your, your these, selling point? None of these dudes are trying to lose weight. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm still fat as fuck, and I still have a full carbon road glide. Let me, let me compensate my for my fine. fat ass by getting carbon fiber parts. <laughs> yeah. So, And it's just like, you know, I sit back and laugh, and I'm like, I remember like that with the, fiber, like the fiberglass and plastic whenever yeah. the big wheel shit was out. You know, like, oh, I can stand on my fender. Can you do this with yours? And it's just like, you guys are all a bunch of fucking losers. You know, it, it, just, it just sucks, man. Buy the best part that you like, and we move on. Yeah. You know, the, that type of marketing, like, there's been no drama in performance baggers other than that fucking cuck from uh, goddamn uh, Canada mm -hmm. that nobody likes, right? So, other than him, there's been no drama in performance baggers. Everybody's been helpful, like, down, doing, like, working, helping people out, right? Yeah. And then. Now, all of a sudden, like, people see money. And so these fucking vultures are coming in, and they're talking shit about people that have been doing nothing but trying to progress the movement, mm -hmm. uh, to, to, to progress the uh, what's great about this, which is what we're doing right now. Yeah. And the fact is, like, to my, to my thing is, like, if you're just here to make money on us, you're not out 
being a part of it. Like Hoffman's sitting there at our fucking anniversary party. You know what I mean? Yeah. Hoffman's a part of our scene. Like these other dudes are just like they're not really into it. They don't even ride this type of bike. They just yeah. I'm a I'm gonna co brand these parts over here and throw them in the market and then talk shit about whoever the big dog is. And it, it's just it's sad in yeah. my opinion. You know what I mean? And and I think that's again one of the reasons why I enjoy the performance side of it. And again, guys like us, where you're going to weed out a lot of those, you know, sad to say, but like the big wheel guys that only want to go to the show, only want to go get the rat's hole trophy or whatever. Whenever my friends and the guys that we enjoy talking to and hanging out are at the, you know, V twin show doing a hundred miles an hour through the smoky mountains together. Yeah. I mean, you're not really at the show. You're just in the vicinity. <laughs> Correct. And and that's the thing is like, you know, that whole V twin visionary, you know, show was awesome. And it was at a nice dealership and, you know, had a good old time. But the show was extremely secondary. I mean, I had more fun hanging out at the cabin with everybody. And again, we'd get up and just go hammer through the, the mountains together. And it was just straight full train of performance guys that could all yeah. ride well. And I mean, we had a we had a blast, but the show was not even on the radar until the day of. Well, I mean, it's kind of counterintuitive because your bike's nice. You know, my bike's nice ish. In the sense that it's not, it's pretty chipped up right now. For, if I'm being honest, but as far as show standards, mm -hmm. like it doesn't, it doesn't hold a candle to a bike that's being trailered across the country, uh, being you know put in a in a show and, and wiped down. Like th there's just no way. Like I, I'm I'm cleaning out grasshoppers out of my rectifier yeah. and, and shit like that. Like I don't, I'm not doing that. Yeah, and it's like uh, even for like Daytona. I mean, we rode around a little bit, and I yeah. had giant love bugs splatter all over it. I mean, I rolled to the hardcore show. I didn't even wipe that bastard down. I was like, fuck it, park it. That's I'm going to go get some beers. To me, that's what's cool about it, right? I mean, yeah. there, I can appreciate a really nice built bike that's, that's dialed in, but what I, I want to appreciate it when that's the first time it came out. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yep. Like, I built this bike for Daytona, but then when I see it in Sturgis, I want it to be chipped up. Yeah. I want it to be, like, worn out. Like, I, that, to me, is cool. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that's the, the one thing, like, my bike, I mean, I'm kind of ready for a change. Like, I want to yeah. change out the body work or whatever. But, you know, at the same time, there's, there's a point where that bike, I guess, has already had its notoriety. It's already seen its day. You know, I'm, I'm ready to, to yeah. have something different. But, like, I've had so many people and customers and like even on my way out here i stopped at a harley dealership to to get a set of gloves because my hands were freezing like a motherfucker and uh the whole service department descended on my bike mm -hmm. they were like oh man you're lucky strike like i seen this bike on instagram and you know the harley video and all this shit this, this is all fucking dope you know and they start asking me questions and you know again i i think a lot of that was you know that bike that has been seen everywhere yeah but you know it, it also draws that genuine interest of people that you know are starting to get into the performance side or or don't quite know what they're looking at and then they all go like well you know where are you riding to i'm like dallas they're like oh what like that's that's real far i'm like yeah i'm, a, I'm aware like yeah. i'm i'm about to do a thousand miles you know yeah th this next two days and um but again, I, I think it's because of that that interest that's kind of progressing, but also has slight detriment to it. Yeah, you know where you know sadly some of these bike shops that were known for building a certain thing are now trying to take their mindset of that certain thing and then apply it to the performance business, and you know that just doesn't translate. And then you look like a giant d bag because you're you know putting yeah. your stamp the on something that you shouldn't be. What I would say is this, you know, I've been thinking about this kind of th this like concept. It's like, you know, riding across country on a Harley Davidson is nothing new to anybody. Right. But for some reason, it's kind of new to the actual industry. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yep. There's so many people, random dudes, just just normal guys that ride Harleys that go all over the country and do badass shit. But for some reason, we're outliers in the motorcycle industry. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's fucking, it's, it's strange. Yeah. You know, and, and like this past year in Sturgis, uh, I saw a well-known bike shop builder had all of his boys bikes and they were all going to, you know, downtown or whatever. And I see him get on a stock as fuck limited ultra and roll with all of his dudes. And I happened to ask my friend who also knows this, this particular guy. And I was like, what's the deal with that? He goes, well, fun thing is he'll build you a bike but he doesn't like riding them so he'd rather ride his stock as fuck ultra 
that's all cushy and works the way it's supposed to and doesn't yeah. have air ride and doesn't have a giant wheel on the front of it. And he goes, that's what he likes to ride, but he'll go park in the back of the, you know, parking lot and then hang out with all the bikes that he's built. Yeah. And I'm like, what the fuck kind of bullshit is that? Like, yeah. What, if you're not willing to, to ride what you build, what are you even doing then? Yeah. You know, and it's not to say I'm the greatest bike builder or anything. I mean, I'm getting cold. Fuck that. Now you know, <laughs> bitched about it. I'm comfortable. I'll fuck with you. I'll the guest is comfortable, and that's yeah. all that matters. Somebody's but, you know, it's just. Estrogen levels are high. Yeah. Well, he's probably hard to please, isn't he? A little bit. Yeah. <laughs> A little bit. A little bit. But, uh, I don't know. It just, it just kind of rubbed me the wrong way, and I'm like, fuck that, dude. It's fake, man. Yeah. Like, you know, the, the, the problem with. Everything is like social media makes it easy to be fake. Um, and sometimes being real, I mean, fuck, dude, like it's it's not it's not going to be flattering for everybody, like being honest and stuff. But yeah, be honest. Yeah. Like, again, if you're not willing to ride what you build for a customer, fuck you. Yeah. You know, that's that's the that's way a, I look that's at a it. fair an as, uh, assessment of that. But yeah, yeah the, I'm um, these moon tuckies, by the way, Montuckies, moon tuckies, Montuckies. These are very good. Yes, they are. They are good. Shout out, Tucky. Shout out, Montucky. Ask your bar, local bar, to carry Montucky. Tell them Fast Life Garage sent you. So, is there going to be ten thousand cases of this at the, the no, Fast Life? No, dude, we're not no. that. We're not that famous yet. Not yet. Not yet. Mm-hmm. But so who, they, they gave us bikes. Going to have a trailer on the back. Is it going to be sacked? <laughs> no, we they they hooked us up with beer. So I think that moving forward, I think we're going to work with them on keeping the 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 podcast stocked with the beer. Yeah. Um. It's just, I mean, we got, we're thinking in, in the, in the realm of 400 to 500 people at this camp out. Holy right? shit. Mm-hmm. There's, there's no way that we're going to, we can't provide, there's not a Montucky in the Southwest to, to yeah. fill the, the bellies of all these degenerate bikers. You know what I'm saying? Well, Especially see, being the first time, you know, they're kind of filling the waters with us and yeah. They can't just supply enough beer for 500 people the first time. You well, know? I mean, they need to get well, on I mean, board with that, at right? The same, well, at the same time, though, like the the Adam Sandoval, you know, that's where he makes his money to keep that campground growing is selling beer yeah. on top of camping fees. And I don't want to cut cut his ability to make money because every year he makes his campground better for us. Yeah. Right? And uh, does he know what he's in for now, oh, yeah, like yeah, this yeah. this year, like being super crazy? <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> what did that conversation go like? Like, look at dude. Uh, there's going to be well, ten thousand guys well, always, that enjoy boozing severely. It's always weird, right? Because there's there's no way I can tell them that like, yo, this is going to be the year, right? Last year we had a fucking COVID, and uh, we were just going to be stoked if fifty people showed up, and then two hundred people showed up. Yeah, so we were stoked about that. Um, and he was accommodating. He, he it was a total like help for him and his campground because that. That fir- that camp out last year, uh, FLC three was literally three weeks after the whole country shut down. Yeah, right. And even though we all knew, uh, we come to realize that so many people made money during the COVID thing because of the the, the unemployment, the PPE. Is that yeah. what it is? The the PPP, um, PPPP. Yeah, the, yeah. The PPs. The PPs. Um, all these different things really kind of, and then like. Who would ever thought that bike sales were going to go up, that, that RV campers were going to go up, that everybody started traveling, right? Yeah. And so campgrounds fucking did well. But the idea is that, like, by helping his campground grow, by by bringing people there, which is a great fucking spot, it's a great area, mm-hmm. it's like it just makes it to where he's going to go more and more every year for us to accommodate and give us more amenities. To the, I mean, he, he redid the bathrooms for us this year. Yeah. I mean, trust me, it was like, yo, man, like – it was rough. Yeah. But I'm I'm literally looking forward to taking a shit in this new bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be real. I mean, it was it was definitely better than having nothing, but Yeah. You know, he's he's doing all he can to fix that place up. He's got little mini bike track, he's got all yeah. kinds of shit. Dude. So so is there going to be like performance drag bike events uh, like being held at FLC5? No, well, here's the deal. So, <laughs> like, do I need to figure out a way to get like a shitty like Briggs and Stratton pit bike like strapped have to the back? Of, shut, shut up. Yeah. So the, there is he has bikes, and we are going to probably do like mm-hmm. a little dirt track thing. I'm in on that. Dude, um, okay. After our dance battle, I challenge you to a fucking mini pit bike race. Let's get it. My they're giant, Coleman's. They're little Coleman's. Even better. Yeah. I I challenge you to a race, X. I got you. My 275 plus pound ass. 
versus you. You already know I'm going to be right out in front of you. All right. <laughs> You remember the? You might be too young, but do you remember the video game Road Rage on like the Fuck Sega yeah, Genesis? Dude. dude, when I first got my first sport bike, I went to the movie trading company and bought everything motorcycle related, so that I can just while I couldn't ride, at least I could play Road Rage. Yeah, I, I watched Torque. <laughs> <laughs> I got I got Biker Boys, yeah. and then uh, I was like, I was just trying to enthrall myself. I, I even went to Barnes and Noble because we're talking like two thousand three, two thousand four. Yeah, so books were still prevalent. And uh, I got motorcycles for dummies, and that book fucked me up. Is that book like over there in no, the, no, no. the library? No, I, I, feel bur- like it I burned be. it. <laughs> so I no evidence. It. it was one of those deals where like I don't need I, I've ridden more. the bike in the parking lot, but I started reading that uh, motorcycling for dummies, and it started talking about how you steer the bike. Yeah, and I was like, no, uh, uh-uh. uh, that doesn't make any sense. You know, like put go like turning the bars right to go left. Like this is. How, how am I going to do that? Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like it, reading it and not doing it made me put so much doubt and anxiety into me that I was scared to ride a bike for yeah. a minute. See, and, and I think that's where, like, again, Biker Boys was, was a real big one for me as well. With I my, still like the movie. Fight GSXR. Yeah. 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 Lawrence Fish. You could what, have you seen it? You, can, yeah. Yeah. you could totally do a drag race on a dirt road <laughs> and then stop at the end of the road before the end of you know the road the into a T. <laughs> okay, so here's what we need. I, I will even see if Lucky Strike has a good enough year. I'll okay. fund this. We need an inflatable movie screen for FLC five, and we play Biker Boys on a loop, dude. <laughs> on a loop, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like let's just, let's just get like the the top burn rubber five. not your soul, brother. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let's get the top dude. five biker movies the, and just play them. The, the sickest thing that ever happened to me though, like was. I got my first bike on Valentine's Day in 2004. Okay. It's the day I picked it up. It snowed that day. Oh, shit. Right? Guy rode the bike to my shop. Oh, you need one? Yeah. He rode the bike to my, to my house. I'm sorry. Not shop. I didn't have a shop at the time. He rode it to my house, and uh, he dropped off a little bullshit helmet that he gave me with the bike, and then uh, it was just me and the bike in my apartment complex parking lot, and I had to figure out how to do everything. Yeah. Snowing on the ground everything. But... Fast forward like three months down the road, and I'm starting to learn, and I'm getting it. I'm making friends in the motorcycle world, and then uh, I get to go to my first funeral, dude. It was the sickest thing, right? <laughs> Wait, your your first funeral? Yeah, because Everybody's if you watch Biker sending, Boys, you see yeah. the line. Everybody's revving up. Oh, okay, okay. Gotcha. I don't know who the fuck died, but I was there. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god! Okay. I got invited to my first biker funeral, dude. It was fucking lit, dude. <laughs> oh my god! So was everybody just revving too, and like the yeah, the whole like, night? I, I wanted to cry. I don't even know who the fuck the dude was. I'm like, yeah, fuck, da, 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 da. sport bike shit, right? Yeah. And then uh, I just thought it was fucking wild, man. Like to. It's the same thing that happened to me when I started street racing, like in 01, right? You watch Fast and the Furious. And then you actually go to an actual spot where everybody meets up to go then street race. And you're like, yeah. it's just like the fucking movie, man. <laughs> Holy shit, this is real life. Yeah. You Who's know? blocking off the streets? Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. Rose, Rose. 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 Find another way home. Oh Find another way home. Yeah. Man, do I get a walkie-talkie now or later? Not real. You never had so, your car, bro. So, okay. <laughs> I, I will fund a, an inflatable t- like movie screen yeah. if we just... Play whatever the five biker movies are, and we'll do it like straight popcorn. Lost Boys, Wild, Wild Hogs, yeah, uh, Torque, Torque. You know, uh, Biker Boys. Biker Boys. I mean, I, I wish they would make more. Is, movies. Is, is there a drop a comment below if you think you know of any bike movies that we need to stream or loop live? Do, what's five. your most favorite biker movie of all time, though? <sighs> Man, that's a good question. I mean, I'm I'm gonna have to go with probably. Man, I don't know. Like, I feel like the the whole Marlboro man yeah, has to be. To that. That's mine. <laughs> yeah, like that bike was so iconic, and like I remember painting one of those. Yeah, for a customer that like I really didn't know what the hell it was at the time. Like it was one of my first like hand lettering jobs. Yeah, he's like, oh, I want the playing cards. I want the whole nine. Like yeah. I'm going to sand my tank to bare metal. And I'm like, okay. And then I watched it. I'm like, this is kind of weird and kind of weirdly yeah. homophobic. But like, I'm down. You know, like you don't that, wear the, that, that opening outfit. scene. That opening scene on that movie where 
he starts in Fort Worth, Texas, and there's mountains in the background. So yeah. it's like, okay, you're not <laughs> yeah. from here. Yeah. Uh, Wrong part of Texas. But that, that whole thing where he's just like, fuck it, I'm going to L.A. Yeah. And he just hops on the bike and is at the, it's like the opening credits, but it's that mon- that montage of him riding across <laughs> country. I'm like, if I would have watched that l- when I first got into bikes, it never would have resonated. But now that I've done bike trips, totally was like, fuck yeah, hell yeah. yeah. You know, showing up, seeing your boy, you know, mm-hmm. was it uh Marble Man trying to get, you know, fucking playing pool and mm-hmm. about to get his ass whooped or some shit. There's, it's cheesy. The movie's cheesy as fuck, but at yeah. the same time, there's parts of it that, like, really hit home. Yeah. You know? But I but see, like, the, when was that movie even out? Can you see that er- for a second? It's either like, when, early. When was I, when was, what's the IMBD on? It's either know, early 90s or Harley late 80s. Marvel, man. Really? I think it's late 80s, to be honest. Like, didn't, didn't Somebody he said ha- Ghost Rider. Oh, okay. Dude, Ghost Rider's <laughs> kind of fucking lit, though. Let's be yeah. real. Yeah, the Nicolas Cage one? What's up? <laughs> uh, yeah. But so, one, Ghost Rider 2 was gay as AIDS. So. Yeah, that, that one was pretty bad. I didn't watch it. Yeah. So so we'll we'll have like a movie night. Dude, at my buddy, my buddy uh, Zombie Mike did that. We were down there in Houston, and he did the movie night. So we were doing podcasts down there, and he had all these people at his shop. And then once the podcasts were done... He's like, hey, dude, we got a projector going on. We're about to watch Stone Cold. Shit. <laughs> I'm like, somebody mentioned that. Okay. Yeah, okay. Okay. Right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, so we got Stone Cold, Harley and the Marlboro Man, Biker Boys. Do we want to put Torque in there? I feel uh, like we almost have to. Wild Hogs was not a bad movie, though. Donnie Hill says, on any Sunday. Well, that's a documentary. Count? Yeah. He asked if it counted. I mean, I guess it uh, if we're talking documentaries, I think the best motorcycle documentary ever is uh, is uh, Twenty One Days Under the Sun or Sky or whatever the fuck. Is that the one with uh, you and McGregor? No, no, no. That's that's the uh, long way round, long way down, long yeah. way up. That's a great series too. But that that long way round, I mean, uh, uh, Twenty One Days uh, documentary thing. Like for me, it's just me. I just that shit hits home because they're traveling, they're going to random spots, they're partying. It's just it, it's the most closest to what I felt whenever I first saw that movie because mm-hmm. I was riding big wheels when it came out, and that's all chopper dudes. And I'm like, that's the shit I just did on a big wheel. Yeah, and of course they would be like, okay, dude. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but at the same time, it's like that's what inspired me to want to camp and party and and get into this other culture was that that documentary. Yeah, you know because it it really was showing me what. I the, the shit I really wanted to do on a bike. I just didn't know it yet. You yeah. Know? Well, so. see, like I I had this conversation with a with a good friend of mine that he's getting into the like enduro side of the world, mm-hmm. and um, you know, I I rode his BMW and the bike's super dope. It's fun. It's like riding yeah. a dirt bike, right? And um, he wants to do the. It's from I think the very top of Alaska all the way to the very bottom Pan of American South Trail. America. Is that I what mean, it is? Uh, the 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 Pan American Highway is what it is. Yeah. So he was like, but nobody will do it with me. I'm like, dude, if I is ever if I ever win a lottery, like yeah. I want to buy one of those bikes and just have it shipped to Alaska and just roll through everywhere. Like I think it'd be dope as fuck. Yeah, the Pan American Highway. Yeah. So now, like, how many hours is that? That's gotta be Oh, it, it, it there's a lot of variations of the road. It's kinda like many, many things, you know what I mean? Yeah. There's different ways to do it, but to me, like that's the most obtainable when when you talk about doing intercontinental type things and uh, international uh, riding. Um, I'm I'm hoping that me and the homies we get to a point where flying overseas and doing a Ireland bike mm-hmm. tour or a, a Switzerland or you know what I mean? Yeah, like that's the shit I really want to do. But it is one of those things where like you know how do you how do you even go about doing it? There's there's ways you can do all that shit that's like so on the cheap. Yeah, but you got to have a lot of time to make that work. Yeah. When as you want to do it within a, a month window or a three week window, it just costs a lot of money. Yeah. You know, you can get a little cheap ass little Kawasaki and ship it over there to Europe and then jump on it and then work for months and months to get all the passports you need to travel on it. And then there's like apps for like, you can sleep on people's couches and shit in yeah. that world and you can do it. I feel like that's how a horror movie would start. Hey, I've I've met dude on my travels, man. Like I, you know, one of the dudes that's riding to the camp out, um, 
jacked up customs. The dude just saw I was coming through Yuma. He's like, dude, do you want to crash here? I'm like, fuck yeah, dude. No, and that, he see, ended up like, being a cool as fuck dude, f- cool as shit, dude. And now he's riding across country to come party with us. Yeah. But, but you know, at the same time, like, we kind of know of that person, you know, through social media or whatever. I mean, it's not like some random dude I met at a fucking quick trip. Yeah, you know exactly. I mean? <laughs> but, like, like, let's say poor Saxon here. He's a nice looking young poor gentleman. Man. Rolls through and just swings through like a weird hostel and fucking, you know, Europe or some shit. He is not coming back. The good thing about being male is that, like, uh, we're not going to get taken <laughs> like <laughs> the mean, movie. <laughs> hey, would you not take him? I'm I'm small, but I can handle myself. All right. Yeah. He's so, already beat everybody at the punching bag machine. So. <laughs> Wait a minute. Everybody. You want to go to? You I, want, dude, you want I, I just I just want to challenge you in everything, Sax. Let's do it. All right, I'm down. He is a punching bag king, though. Yeah, but see, so here's what I feel like would happen. Like, let's say you take Sax to, again, Europe or whatever. Yeah. And he just disappears. What would you do if you got that phone call and be like, I've taken your man? <laughs> I'm like, I'm shit, bro. You, like, please, Damn, please sucks. keep him. He <laughs> likes macaroni and cheese, and he's really good at the punching bag machine. <laughs> You know, keep them as long as you want. <laughs> Macaroni and cheese. Yeah. I mean, or, or would you do the like whole thing where you'd, you'd plug in the, what the hell is that guy's name? Uh, A very special set of skills. Oh, oh. yeah. Uh, Liam Nel- Nielsen. Yeah, yeah, Liam. yeah, Liam Nielsen. Yeah. Something would you do like that. that for sex? Well, I don't really have those special skills. <laughs> like, hey, man, can I trade you a paint job for my buddy back? <laughs> like, can we barter this out? Like, yeah. you need someone to do tile? I think I have a buddy. Yeah. You know, like, you AC? You got See, Brad? that's a good boss right there. <laughs> you know, like, he'd work for your return. It's like, oh, I just want money. I'm like, well, I ain't got no money, bro. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. we need to work this out somewhere else. Yeah. He's a good sander. Got dance skills. I'll tell you what. You just... Go ahead and take advantage of whatever you want out of him, but just leave him here. You don't have to kill him, you know? <laughs> See, that's a good boss. Yeah, I mean, I, I would offer work. I mean, I can, I'll do you, I'll do your drywall or something. And, you know. <laughs> I don't know, man. It's a... Uh, there, there's a lot of... Uh, but at the same time, like, you need to set those kind of goals in motorcycling or just in life. That way you have something to to, to dream or to kind of push towards, whether it's riding across doing the Pan American Trail or if it's riding in Europe or if it's just like there's so much rad shit in these 50 states or 48 states that you don't have to go anywhere else, to be honest with you. Yeah. You can spend a lifetime seeing America and going through these small towns and these little nook and cranny like waterfalls and spots and there's enough badass shit here that you don't have to like set your sights for riding through Russia. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'd like to ride in Hawaii. Yeah, I mean, you That'd can rent bikes and do all that yeah. shit. And um, I don't know. I mean, like, I'm pretty content with just being here until opportunities open up to where we can go international, you know. But I don't want to, like, get in my head where it's international or fuck off, where yeah. then all of a sudden, like, I don't enjoy doing this. But right now, everything is pretty fucking rad, mm. you know. And so it's like, I'm just going to keep living. I'm going to keep on living. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, that's uh, the one thing like I'm, I'm trying to talk Steve into doing is like doing a trip coast to coast. Yeah. You know, I mean, really, what's California from here? Another 1,200 miles? I mean, you know, let's uh, just say about like, 13. Okay. The so, I mean, way 13. you know, what what's really another, you know, two days from here to, you know, Los Angeles or whatever. Yeah. You know, and, and I think one of these days, like... I'll I'll basically make him do it with me, you know. Dude, it's it's fucking awesome though, man. It really is. It's, you know, especially like like what what this camp out really does though. It, it, there is people coming from every part of the country, right? And by by being present and talking to people, you make friends, and all of a sudden now you have you've always wanted to go to California, but now you know people there, so that when you get there, you get to hang out with people there. Yeah, and that makes all the difference in the world, in my opinion. You yep. know, well, and that's the the nice thing about you know again that social media aspect is you know I talk to guys from Arizona, California, Maine, you know, yeah. New York, whatever, and uh, you know again most of us aren't giant assholes for so, the most part. For the most part, I mean, I got my days. We all do, man. Like. I got a lot of shit I can talk shit about right now. I got a, I got a, I got a fucking plethora. plethora. <laughs> of, Both of you just <laughs> use the word plethora at the same word. time. It's my word. Oh, yeah. But no, I, I, there's so many things that like annoy the fuck out of me right now. Um, <laughs> one thing is, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and say it, is repost pages calling themselves club style. 
uh, fill in the blank state. location, state, country, yeah. region, club style, earth. Who the fuck knows? If you're club style, let's just say you're club style North Dakota, you're only allowed to post North Dakota club style bikes. Yeah. Don't repost my fucking bagger, dude. How fucking dare you? I'm not from North Dakota. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I, and that's the thing is like, they're just trying to get followers, right? Yeah, because the the repost page, and don't get me wrong, like I mean, Proper Baggers is a repost page, but he is a dude in the, in the scene. Yeah, um, there's a lot of repost pages that have a lot of, uh, in my opinion, relevance mm-hmm. to our scene. But it's the low hanging fruit for anybody to do, right? Because it's kind of like a, if you start a repost page, people will follow you because a you're posting all the coolest bikes there is out there, but you're also People think, oh, I'll follow them, and maybe they'll repost my bike one day. Yeah. So there's like that double-edged sword where there is something to look at, and then there's the hope that maybe my bike makes it on, graces the 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 timeline of this page. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Now, do you think the the repost aspect is almost to the point because there isn't any magazines around anymore? I mean, definitely. I mean, I, I've made the statement before that I think the repost pages are the new magazines because. Yeah. If I really want to know what's going on in the performance bagger scene, I know that Daniel at Proper Baggers is curating pretty heavily what's going on. Yeah. You know, whether it's parts or products or whatever. But. And also, I feel like Daniel is meticulous on what does get posted. He does allow ape hanger performance baggers to. And I I don't agree with that. I don't know if I've ever seen one. He maybe he hasn't posted one, but he has advocated for it on the. uh, on the Facebook chats, yeah, or the the rooms, but see, I, I mean, had to get off of those fucking. Dude, they're things, the worst, dude. They're the fucking worst. <laughs> like I, I want to eat this mic as much as I hate those fucking things. Because, like, what size T bars are you running? What size two into one? What that's like for fuck's sake? How much other things can we talk about here? Like I just, I just could you know not th- those questions with it. made so much more sense back in the day when there wasn't a plethora of information yeah. out there. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, there's literally, you can, it, don't get me wrong. When I first got into Dyna shit, I, I didn't know the brands. I didn't know Conley's, which is no longer around. I didn't know the JD Fab. I didn't know these people to get these Repop T-Sport fairings or FXR T-Fairings. And so, yeah, like, I, but I never made a post. Like, I just reached out to the shops that I know of. Like, hey, you know, what fairing is that? Do you sell it? Mm-hmm. Right? Um, But... The world's a lot of different places now, and there's so many fucking products and so many things. I get it. It's tough. But the worst part, in my opinion, where I get, like, aggravated is when people comment without seeing if things are tagged in it or without reading the actual post. Yeah. You know, hey, what bars are those? Oh, you mean the ones that I just talked about in this post and tagged them? Like, fucking read, you fucking fuck. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like that shit drives me so much. So so, and and I'm like, and again, I think it's back to that instant gratification world, right? Yeah. Well, just you know, like use that. There's that visual skill that you're born with, and there's this thing you learn in school called reading. If you put them together, you can solve so many problems in life. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's just like do it, do the work. Yeah. I don't I have time to make a post and then answer your f- stupid ass questions. <laughs> Trying yeah. to go PC here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. It, and and at, at some point, it gets to the point where it's like, I want to tat, like, it, when whenever you make a post and, like, you're constantly having to, you know, tell these brands, these people what brands they are, which they're all tagged in it, but you got to do it in the comments because people are lazy. Yeah. I'm like, man, like, I need, like, I need a percentage every time I have to do that from these companies because yeah. that's, that's what it's getting to. I'm like. You're paying a dude to do this job probably, you know, twenty, thirty dollars an hour. I just spent like ten minutes on that, so you know, it's a good five bucks. Yeah, you know, <laughs> just making a world of difference. Five yeah. bucks at a time. Yeah, that shit adds up. It does. It if does. I answer all those dumbass questions all day, I could probably make about one hundred fifty bucks. Yeah, you know. See, and here we are. T- like an hour ago, we were talking about how we're not assholes, and here we are being assholes. Well, the thing is that if you're not a I think people need to be assholes and be who they are and not be fake. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so like what, what I think is fun about all of us is big drill says gay. 
Dude. Dude, okay. <laughs> Big trouble. He's, he's sitting passenger right now with Monty, so he's probably giving him a reach around or a handy right now. Let's yeah. be real. Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like, do you think Mark would at least spit on it? He's got some big hands, bro. He does, yeah. but he's, he's also older, so maybe he'd be like... Calloused? Yeah, just... Yeah, but he also has like an office job. He doesn't do anything really rough or hard in life. I mean, <laughs> this is true. What did he comment now? Jetty says we are assholes. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Fuck Jetty. <laughs> We're all assholes in our own right. But, but no, I, I I think that what's fun about it is that they people realize that like it's not it's not like it's not hate. I don't hate people. Like it's more like it's a price of admission. You gotta have thick skin and you gotta yeah. be ready to take a little shit and give a little shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? And uh if you show up, man, like I like I said, I think it's all it's all good. You what know? are you typing over there? He's commenting. Commenting back. Do you, do you tell like, them how you, fucking are, gay they are? <laughs> Wait, I didn't mean that. Yeah, <laughs> cut that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do, do we just beep things? Is, do you have the power of beep? Uh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> did you just use your sweet soundboard? I did. What what sound did you make? A clapping noise. A clapping noise. <laughs> See, I feel like we we should be able to hear that as well. Uh, then it would like reverb and go through and like a, uh, it's like looking down the mirror when the mirror behind you it'll keep yeah. doing that through and through and through. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. That's okay. Good, good call on that one, Zach. Science, bitch. Yeah, <laughs> fucking a science. Science. So what do you what do you think? Uh, you know how how like where do you go from here, man? Like what do you think is uh, it's crazy how quickly twenty twenty one's already like rolling, dude. Yeah, it's 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 almost half over already, and it's freaking crazy. Um. I don't know this for for Lucky Strike especially. Um, I need to have a shot by let's say another couple months and and be out. Um, you know, just trying to start pumping work out in in my own former fashion. So, um, you know, that's kind of the plan, and we're hoping that works out. So, mm. but. so and the plan is to move Lucky Strike to Virginia Beach. Yeah, down uh, down into the Virginia side of the world. Um, I just need to get out of the snow. Like Pennsylvania is the most. Where's the snow line state. for the North Sea? Um, like most people just call it like Marylandish. Um, okay. Where like they'll still get snow kind of south, like into Maryland and Virginia, but um, you know it's not nearly it as bad. Stay. Yeah, yeah. It's like they'll get ice a little bit, and you know they'll still have a winter ish, but you, know, you get fucking eleven months. A riding season um so like for pennsylvania the biggest problem with that state and i mean i'm born and raised pennsylvanian yeah um it's just gray all the time it always rains it's the most depressing place ever yeah but i heard pittsburgh was like revitalized and like super oh, on the trendy up thing. super dope place like yeah. pittsburgh's awesome um but they're they're what is that gentrifying um the the city i love it and Keep doing it. Yeah. Again, kudos. Whatever. If you want to, I'll have, pay three more dollars so I don't get mugged. Yeah. Exactly. But <laughs> but if you want to have like a twenty five hundred dollar rent for like a studio in downtown, like party on with your bad self. But you know the the problem is is it's uh, there's levels to this shit, man. There there is no no doubt. <laughs> but uh, like the customer base is not the base of what I need to do oh, for sure. Because yeah. um, like Pennsylvania in, in that kind of East Coast side of the world is still light years behind in almost yeah, every the aspect Amish state well okay now one thing about the old duchies as we like to call okay. them they will fuck your world up for ice cream uh -huh. you ever need anything sharpened or polished those motherfuckers will take a piece of shit aluminum stainless and it'll be chrome finished by the time you're one done one of my favorite movies of all time is sex drive yes it is Seth. It's, well, well, it's not Seth Rogen, but Seth, Seth, Green. Seth Green. Yeah, he his role in that movie. You know what we were talking about? All it's right, so movie. it's on Netflix. You need to watch Dude, it. It's so fucking good. Sex Drive. Sex Drive. Yeah, it's the dude so drives a funny. GTO judge to go bang some chick on like back then. I think it was like MySpace or something. Wasn't something. it? It was like a like a chat room kind yeah. of thing. Something and uh, y'all aren't too far from losing. And yeah. I, I still got. <laughs> there you go. And so you like, still got MySpace. I actually uh, went back and looked at mine not too long ago, and man. It's still a thing? It was really gay. Shit. <laughs> you, don't, you, don't, you don't say that. <laughs> yeah. Bleep it again. Bleep it again. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. We are trying to cut all the uh, slander words out of the podcast. That's fair. Yeah. Yeah, especially if you want to be, like, part of the corporate world. Yeah, you know, the, the weirdest part about it is... <laughs> You, you don't want to, like, 
everything everything's taken out of context. Oh yeah, a thousand times. percent. You know, like and even even sometimes what's said on the podcast doesn't really have the context of the conversations or the situations that take place before and after the podcast. Mm-hmm. So like sometimes a conversation we'll have downstairs will set the tone for when we turn the mics on. Yeah. And, uh, you know, obviously it, it sounds like a, um, like you're trying to, uh, you know, make excuses for your actions or whatever, but it's a weird one, man. It really, well, and, and that's my problem with like the whole world. Cause like, I'm, I don't, I don't know if like anarchy is the right word, but like yeah. I'm super pumped whenever like zombies happen or something happens and like we can just get off of this fucking woke bullshit. But like, I want to just be rational. Like, let's let's be rational in the world, not take what I say out of context or, well, we only clip this much out of this conversation and, you know, he's now a racist or, you know, whatever. And it's just like, man, just be rational about the, yeah. the world, you know, make your own decisions. I'm going to do me, you do you, and, and away we go. I mean, it's just one of those things, man. Like, you know, we, we've we tried to uh, do this podcast. We've tried to, I mean, trust me, if it, if it was ever to blow up bigger than it has, like, I don't know. I probably have to, like, literally get rid of, like, 180 episodes. Because <laughs> that's just why, coming why back. Why is the Fast Life back to one? <laughs> yeah. But it, it's not. I mean, it just sucks because, like. I, I would rather leave it up there and just let people see the change, like yeah. see see the growth in in the ability to carry a conversation on a microphone, the the growth in the in the uh, the vocabulary that that I might be using. Which mm-hmm. trust me, I'm not saying I'm smart now, but you know, you get past the likes, you get past the ums at some point. I still use them, but yeah. you know, it, it doesn't become as prevalent as it was before. But also, like the best part about it, and one thing I've always liked, and I love this for myself, is that. When you have an idea and a guest changes your perspective. Yeah. And you're able to put your idea out there and be stringent on it, but then have this conversation that people see in real time. It might take two and a half hours of the of that conversation, but at the end of it, you now think this way or you yeah. see it this way because it was explained to you better. You know what I mean? And um, that only happens when you listen to the whole thing. But if you're looking for things to be mad about, then you can find that really quick. Yeah. I mean, he said gay while ago. He did. It was true. Sax. He said he said it. I didn't say it. I don't ever say shit like that. It's usually him. Yeah, you you hang out with him. I mean, you watch out. Well, no, it's all Big Trouble's fault for putting it in my mind. Oh, that is true. That dude's so nice. He is. Mark's the best. No, he's not. I can't wait to see him. He said he can't wait to see us tomorrow. See? Yeah, so we're doing a podcast with him tomorrow. I have no idea what we're talking about. Oh, shit. I, I will, I will, I'm going to put it right here. Okay. What you're going to talk about is all of the shenanigans that Mark and David have done. Yeah. And you'll have to ask him about, like, his, I don't know if arrests are the right thing, but his, his, his bounty hunting type yeah, we'll, thing. Yeah, we'll yeah. call it bounty hunting because Mark's just a badass. But some of his stories, like we were just sitting around just drinking and smoking and having a good old time. So I think he Tennessee. makes all his stories up. Even if they are. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so there's one time. Yeah, but. even if Mark makes all of those up, to make them up to that level, it was hilarious. Like, I can't wait for you to talk to Mark. I'm. It's, the, it's, you know what the biggest hilarious. problem is going to be? Is that, like, our relationship is now on a shit-talking level? Yeah. And I don't know if me and him are going to be able to have a real civil conversation. <laughs> yeah. Like, I cannot wait. talking shit to each other. But here's the biggest problem. And, you know, I guarantee right now Mark is probably smoking. You don't really allow smoking in here. No, we do allow drugs. Oh, yes. drugs, correct. <laughs> but, like... Uh, Mark, I love you to death, but watching him smoke like he does, he is a fucking chimney. It is yeah. hilarious. So We're like you better marijuana? have like ten ashtrays. No, we, like, like no, I told him I was like because he actually brought that up. Is like, hey man, I don't know if I can sit in a podcast that long and not smoke a cigarette. Yeah, I was like, well then do drugs. <laughs> <laughs> That's allowed. Yeah, I was like, dude, don't smoke cigarettes. What is this, 86? Dude? Yeah. You're going Mark- to wrap, wrap this cigarette pack up in your arm sleeve, dude? Yeah. So Calm they, down. In Daytona, we were all partying at Mark's Airbnb. And I swear to God, that dude probably drank 30, like, White Claws yeah. and smoked 10 packs of cigarettes. Yeah, he's, I was like, he's Mark, gross. You are, he is <laughs> disgusting. Yeah, you are, you are shellacked on the inside, buddy. That's why he looks like he's, you know, 24, and he'll look 24 until the day he dies. Oh, have, have you ever met Mark Norton yet, Sex? All, all the Mark. Dallas homies, like a cut, like Dragon and and uh, a couple of the homies have met Mark. Yeah, they did the uh, down south camp out in Daytona, but he he's a gym. He oh, really he is. is a gym Mark's Mark is yeah. awesome. 
He is. And yeah. uh, I'm excited. You know, he, he got a big-ass Airbnb here in Dallas. Like I said, ha- all you guys listening, do you know it's fucking camp out week? It's camp out week. <laughs> it's camp out it's week. Camp it's out week. Camp out week. FLC four week. Yeah. Have <laughs> you guys created like hand gang signs yet? No, no, no. We got a hashtag though. Yeah, that's true. That's FLC true. Yeah. And four. We're, and we're getting uh, tats. Yeah. And shirts. I'm getting tatted up, dude. Fuck. I asked him whenever he said he was getting tatted, does that come with a staph infection from like the camp out? No, 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 no. No. Staff of it. What do you? Yeah, Mercer. You just go bathe in the river. Yeah, you know? <laughs> yeah, in Oklahoma, I'm sure that'll be perfectly <laughs> no, fine. Uh, Scott nice Scott's brown. an actual tattoo artist, and he's bringing like all sanitary shit. So, other than the fact that, that it's that, taking it's place after, outside after the fact, like, I'm tattooing him. Oh shit, dude! And <laughs> I don't wash my hands. Wait, I don't are you, are you gonna tattoo sex? No, I don't know. No, I'll can. tattoo anybody that wants me to That's tattoo. Always me. tattoo me. Can can we pause the podcast? Cause I gotta pee. You can leave. Uh, I mean, I, I got <laughs> all right. I'm out. It was a pleasure. I'm gonna ride back to Pennsylvania. <laughs> you guys gave me all these moon tuckies. Mon. Mon. Moon. There's Mon. two yeah. ooh, ooh, O's in moon. Mon Tucky, oh, Dad Gamut. What are everybody saying on that bitch? A bunch of like, hey guys, listen to your podcast. I love it. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Tyler Lobenthal. I don't know if I pronounced that right. He said he's riding down Wednesday from Iowa at 40 degrees. Oh, yeah. There's like a cold snap going through the middle of the country right now. It's pretty uh, it's pretty insane, but hey, you got to earn this shit, man. Yeah, you got to earn, gotta earn it. Let's see. Um, the other movies people were talking about... Uh, T-Bar Jesus, Mark said beyond the law. Yeah. That's what Charlie Sheen. It's a pretty good one, though. No. Uh, got no. that tiger blood in him. Gnarly Fox. Watch some Isle of Man. Yeah, that's a... Uh, Isle of Man is that, that uh, sport bike r- race, I think. And it's just like this big loop around the uh, an island. It's... Isle of Man, I think, is what it is. Yes. And, uh, dude, these dudes are fucking ripping around, like, public streets. Mm. But it's a big loop, and it's it's pretty intense, man. Yeah, they do, like, unlimited class sport bikes. And, like, mm-hmm. they're legit. They're, like, fucking just... And then the wrecks are gnarly as fuck on that, yeah. too. Like, there's a couple places that they're, like, racing out in the country. And I think it was two years ago... That uh, this dude lost control of his like thousand cc bike and he was doing about two hundred. Bike goes shooting off the road and it was like tiered field. Bike's gone, like shoo, missing completely into the countryside. Holy shit! So yeah, yeah. you've never seen the, the Iowa Man TT. It's it's dope. There, the thing is like there's like walls and they'll be doing like knee on the ground with their head moved around so they're not scraping on the wall. To go around a corner. It's fucking in- intense. Yeah, to watch and there's, it. like, God, bumps and stuff in the road, and they'll jump their bikes. Yeah. Because they're going so goddamn fast. It's Where can I watch this? Uh, YouTube. What's the cost of something like this with my own helmet? Like, fuck me, man. Yep. 40, 40 times a day. 40 times. I, I feel you, man. Yeah. Yeah. It's in, And then do you get the ones that say, I really want all of this, but yellow or pink? And it's like they're asking <laughs> this, you to blatantly copy. Yeah, the same design. Yeah. Well, Just you know, colors. sometimes you get people that uh, that do want that, um, but you know the, the the one. So on that note, like I think maybe we should talk about it because this is something that's always dra- drive me nuts about like customers that think that if if you have X bike, let's say you have a performance bagger because that's kind of the new thing, right? And you decide to paint it different blues, and then somebody else paints their bike different blues, they did not copy you. True. It's not it's not the same thing, right? Like mm-hmm. you're not that important of a person. Yeah. Right? That's just the most common it's like one of the most common colors in the world, blue, red, gold. There's a reason why these colors pop up, right? If you want to find everybody's always hitting me up going like, "Hey man, I want to do something no one else does." I'm like, uh um so brown yeah. Well, I mean, no, brown's a popular color. You've done some yeah. badass yeah. root beer colors. Yeah. I mean, and, and that's the thing. is like it, I tell a lot of my customers, it's all been done. Like, there's not a single color that's not known, that's not been put with another color, Yeah. that I've not put with another color. 
you know, uh, I got nothing. There's, you know? there's like when it comes to the color department, don't try, don't try to pursue an idea because no one else has done it. Just pick the color you fucking like and yeah. run with it. You know what I mean? Yep. And see, I think a lot of customers too, like, uh, you know, the, the ones that I enjoy the most are the ones that give me the creative freedom to yeah. do stuff. But like, have you had one of those customers that brought like the wife's nail polish or the marker from the Prisma color fucking kit yeah. and they go, I want this. I haven't had that happen to me in a long time because I'd nip those in the bud. But sometimes when you do bikes and people are trying to powder coat their shit to match the paint, mm-hmm. I've always had an issue with that because realistically, and that's why I used to be, I don't paint as many bikes as I used to, but I used to like try to get in involved in their entire bike building process. That way everything was really uh, cohesive together. Yeah. And sometimes when you're trying to match powder coat and paint, Powder coat has a limited window of availability unless you have something finished paint that they can go match. Yeah. And see, like, that's why I usually start with the powder coat. Yeah. Because you can't tint powder coat like, you know, you or I could tint paint. Yeah. And um, I told a customer that we're doing a bike now for, I was like, pick out your powder coat and give me a sample. Yeah. And I could make the paint match the powder coat at that point. Because I, I can't, I don't like that responsibility. Well, it's it's. True. I would rather them just. But just, like, if you if you hand that person a if you like want a if chip, you want your frame painted or your frame to match, fucking paint it like a man. I, I agree, but you know as well as I do that everybody wants to powder coat or like now Cerakote's the the big thing. It's well, like Cerakote's great because that's not going to be in the paint. Correct. It's just going to be contrasting with it. But I usually have to still match the Cerakote or powder coat somewhere in a in a paint job is it always comes through like that and it's so like, for, well, this is what i do and i'm gonna sound like an asshole i'm not gonna get any more customers uh <laughs> i usually tell them whenever it starts getting super complicated like that i'm like look man uh i'm just i'm not interested anymore yeah you know like i would love i love being part of big builds they're gonna be badass but when it comes to all these hoops and stipulations and i gotta try to like I try to tell dudes, like, you want me to paint this helmet to match your stock fucking Harley Davidson color. Why are we Why are we playing this game, man? Yeah. Like, really? Are you always going to leave it stock? Or are you not going to buy the new one when it comes out two years from now? Like, like let, just paint the fucking helmet the way you want a paint job. Yeah. You know, like, no one's going to... Are you that worried about your identity that if somebody walks in and goes, hey, man, your helmet doesn't match your bike, and you're like, oh, man, fuck. <laughs> yeah. See, I, I, I don't ever paint a helmet to match my bike no. ever. This shit's the, the thing that sucks is like some of my closest friends, James, Big Will, Cody. They're they're trendy as fuck. They match all their shit. Their shoelaces, their underwear probably matches. Um, but me, I'm like, like I literally painted my helmet that I'm running now like my last paint job. Yeah, and I'm running on this bike. You know what I mean? Like. Not by design. It was an accident, but it worked out that way. Yeah. And um, I just, I, I think that uh, the whole, I've had, that's that's probably one of the biggest things I've had issues with with customers getting pissed off at me. Or not even customers, just people that are inquiring about work and I've declined it because they want me to match a Hayabusa stock, yeah. Hayabusa paint job. I'm like, I'm not even going to attempt to get those colors because they're hard. They mm-hmm. don't have color codes the way that like Harley's do. And then they got what, color color right. Yeah, that paint sucks. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Well, and even then, like some of Harley's colors, they're proprietary, and you can't even match them. Or even if you do get like the Harley paint from the dealer, they usually don't match either. Yeah. And um, like I said, like I got no problem making a color because like I'm fortunate in the route that you know the paint system that I use, I have a color box. Yeah. So like, and again, a. Uh, for everybody listening, a secret behind the curtain, if you will, is nine times out of 10, whenever I do a custom paint job, half of them are OEM colors because you're going to crash your bike. You're going to back it out of the trailer and lose your footing and you're going to drop the motherfucker. I I tell customers all the time, I will rarely ever make a one-off custom color for your bike that you intend on riding. And I've had customers look at me like, you know, what What do you mean? Like Harley's Atomic Orange that's on like those uh, uh, CVO Road Glides that had like the stripe and like the granite gray yeah, color. Yeah. That Atomic Orange, I found a Nissan like Elantra color that is identical to it. And I'm like, dude, I just use this code that I have a formula for. 
to yeah. paint your bike. And almost every time I have a paint job that looks custom, I can match any of that at any time in case something stupid happens. Yeah. And again, I use OEM colors all the time. Why, why reinvent the wheel? So what do you think about like, you know, we were kind of talking about this downstairs and I felt like we needed to kind of address it. Like performance baggers is the new rage, but painting them is still kind of, I think, uh, and, and, and don't get me wrong. There's a lot of people painting performance baggers, uh, but they come to mind myself, you, Insta having Kyle. Um, who else is really doing like really high end paint on these baggers? Yeah, there there, there really isn't too many. I, I don't think right now. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, any painter can paint a performance style bike. I mean, true, true. You know, look at the Indian that Kyle did with Poland and Springle and all them guys. I mean, the bike's dope as hell, badass. Yeah. But you know, at the same time. I think this performance bagger thing is getting to the point where, again, kind of like big wheel stuff, it's all been done. Yeah. You know, carbon fiber has been done. The inverted front ends from Big Bear have already been done. You know, everybody's already put every single wheel on a performance bagger. It just, it is what it is. Mm. Um, But it's now getting to the point where, like the big wheels were, paint is what's going to separate you from, again, that fully carbon fiber road glide that's sitting beside you. but at the same time, it's it's people don't realize how much money is going to be invested into a performance bagger. I mean, I remember when I first started building my road glide, I was like, man, I'm not not going to have the big wheels, not going to have the air ride, not going to have any of that stuff. I'm so deep into that bike that it's blown my other bikes out of the water. Yeah, 100%. But handles a million times better, stops a million times better, rides a million times better. So, you know, but it also has a $20,000 paint job on it, mm-hmm. um, you know, with eight thousand dollars worth of carbon fiber on it so you know i think the that paint side of the performance baggers are going to be kind of that next part where guys are going to to have to start painting and detailing out a bike that they're going to have crazy money into yeah you know and it it is what it is because you know it's it's kind of that that black street glide you know mentality yeah, you might have carbon fiber on your road glide and be fully carbon fibered out, but it's the same identical bike that I've seen a hundred other times on Instagram and yeah. social media, you know, and, uh, you know, the, the red carbon bike that we did for Daytona, I mean, it was pretty much the only one there that, you know, had a real crazy nice paint job that was too kind of a show bike level. Well, and that's know? kind of where, where, like, as we start to move into, um, you got something? As we move into like uh, the the more show aspect of these bikes, which you know people are going to argue that they're not supposed to be for show, and that's I, I agree that, mm. that. But at the same time, like it's part of motorcycle culture is bike shows, yeah. Right. So if you really want a unique bike now, it isn't going to be about like which Santoro crash bar you bought. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's going to be more like how did you personalize this? Ba- past the off the shelf parts that you bought. Yeah. Because yes. it's not like a fabricator's ball of a of a platform, right? Correct. You know, like the most fabrication that's going on these bikes is the tanks like what you offer. Yeah. You know? And that's the the big thing is, you know, again, the these bikes for the most part are are bolt on, you know, parts. Now granted they make those bikes a million times better than stock. For sure. But you know, again, you're not having some lunatic putting on five hundred pounds of fiberglass to fiberglass bags differently or or, or, or fucking, you know, you know trying to cut your neck and weld it back together exactly. and hope you don't die. Yeah. yeah, and and that's where I think these these guys that come are coming from that world are trying to make it into the performance side of it where they're trying to almost I mean, be, did you see those side covers that like they they cool your brakes? Yeah, I, I did. And and again, kudos. What? I'll never run them ever. It's a joke, dude. It, it is. So it's a joke. So let's put it this way. I my firm belief is that if you need your rear brakes cooled that much, you got problems. Yeah, you're not riding it right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, but again, it's it's one of those things where it's that that company is not a performance-based company, in my exactly. opinion, and you know, again, it's it's just one of those things where paint's going to have to be that that separator, in my opinion. Yeah. And you know, then guys go, well, if you're going to paint it real nice, you know, you're not going to ride it the way that it's supposed to. Hey, Your bike, I, my I bike, they're Insta having Kyle's. Yeah, Insta yeah. having Kyle's bikes. I mean, I could give a fuck less about what paint jobs on anybody's bike, but I'm gonna beat the shit out of it just it's as a, much. It's as a new else. version of fuck you money, is what it is. Now, fortunately, is. I don't think myself. 
or even yourself can afford yourself. Oh, fuck no. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> like, there's been times where I laugh whenever, like, have you ever handed somebody a quote and be like, they're not going to pay for this? And then they do, and you're like, oh, fuck me. Yeah. <laughs> like, two thumbs up, you know? It's, and, it's a weird one, right? Be- because, like, because we are painters, we're able to do things on these bikes that, that I can't afford myself, mm-hmm. right? But at the same time, like, I also drive a cash car Lexus. Yeah, I don't have a fucking. I don't. I, I'm not rich. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, it's just what I do. If I was a a, a mechanic, my motor would probably be more than I can afford yeah. because I have that ability. But when it comes to these bikes, down the line, and as they as as this scene continues to grow, if people, you know, buying carbon fiber, the reason why I was bringing that up is because we had this conversation before. But when dudes lead off the, the the conversation of I'm building a performance bagger. I want to do paint. I just bought all the carbon fiber for it. How much to do paint jobs on it. And th- that uh, full carbon fiber road glide is roughly going to be, what was it, like $8,000 yeah, for all the carbon fiber? Yeah. I, I would say, you know, you do the whole nine. You're, you're probably into that eight grand range. Yeah. So you're eight grand in carbon fiber, right? These are parts that they're not technically sitting on the shelf, but they are off the shelf products that you buy and throw on your bike and now you want me to sand all these things down and put a hundred hours on top of these things Mm -hmm. and you want to pay four grand yeah but see like do you feel like that was still in the big wheel thing too where like whenever the 30s and 32s came out and those guys were like oh man i just got you know ten thousand dollars worth of wheels and i want a custom paint job i only got four grand to spend the, the thing about paint work and, and not to talk shit about the price, right? Because there's a painter for everybody's budget. Yeah. There really is. There is a painter out there that might have the skill level that is worth $4,000. Mm-hmm. And there's a painter out there that has a skill level that's worth $6,000. And then when you start getting the ten, twelve, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 range, which is probably very unheard of for a lot of people, there is a skill level to that. And you got to understand that like for us in the paint world, our goal is to get to that level. Yeah. Like, I don't want to be the, who wants to be the affordable painter? Like, yeah. is that a life goal? Like you want to be average as fuck your entire life? Like, no, I want to work, bust my ass and be sought after nationwide or worldwide. And I want to get the most money for my time. Like every other adult in the fucking world does yeah. for what they do for a living. And at some point, you might not value the twenty thousand dollar paint job or the time. That's cool. Lucky Strike is not the guy for you. Yeah. But good thing there's fucking uh, Craig's Custom out of fucking Little Rock, Arkansas. Those motherfuckers, right? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I can't. Up. I can't wait till the the, the throwdown of Arkansas versus you guys in Texas. No, Arkansas is more. It's- Arkansas is kind of like a. They're like little brother. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. Like they're, they're around. They're, they're, it's they're like trying. we're Peter Pan and they're the Lost Boys. Oh, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. You know what? Instead of the, the inflatable movie screen. I'm going to start calling uh, King Tony Rufio. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> he does have the hair. He does. I mean, yeah. like legit. Whatever happened to Rufio? That dude was, he was an actor, know. though. Yeah. He was in Biker Boys, I think. What? No, Rufio? I, from Peter Pan? I don't know. He might not have been. I might have been I don't know. overstepping my yeah. boundaries. I don't know. That's a good one. <laughs> we might have to IMBD that before we leave. Who played Rufio in the Robin Williams Peter Pan? But yeah, I don't I don't know. That's that's gonna be the the kind of question that I have here moving forward with the, the performance bagger world. Yeah. Is is how far guys are gonna take it. Cause you know, like Curtis Hoffman, I mean, he builds some crazy nice bikes. And, you know, he's definitely kind of that detail-oriented guy as well. And, you know, same with Kyle and yeah. and everybody. But, you know, I, I think your average customer, I don't know if they're going to do that or not. He's in Biker Boys. He, he is in Biker yeah. Boys? Was Don, <laughs> okay, who does Dante he play in Basco. Biker Boys? Yeah. What? He was in Biker Boys. God, now I'm going to have to. He his, looks it, like he was in Tokyo Drift as well. <laughs> he probably yeah. was. He <laughs> has a little Asian vibe to <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, for sure. Now I'm going to have to watch Biker Boys. That shit on, like, uh, Netflix by now? Dude. Like Hulu? Hulu. I don't have to like dig out on a DVD player for this fucking event. I got it, bro. No, it's, Shut up. It's on something. Yeah. I just watched it not too long ago. <laughs> <laughs> it's getting in my fields. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, that, that's the hard part. Of, I mean, like, you know, the same thing happens, you know, even with helmets, man. Like, yeah. uh, dudes will, like, 
trip out at how much a helmet costs to get painted. Yeah. You know, but it's like, look, man, there's there's a helmet painter for you. Yeah. There's a lot of dudes out there learning how to do this stuff, trying to get to that 10,000 hour mark like we've already accomplished to and they're going to do that helmet for that four dollar price range that you want to spend. And that's cool. And you know what? I hope that helmet still means the same to you because that's what it's supposed to mean is like, fuck, this helmet means something to me. Yeah. Right. But eventually it hopefully it means something to have a lucky strike helmet or a Poland helmet or a fucking Schultz or whoever, you know? Yeah. And if you can never have one of those and that's cool and that's what it's about. Yeah. And I, I think that's one of those big things too is, you know, like my average helmet, I tell customers you're anywhere from 800 to 2,500 bucks. I have several that I've gone over that twenty five hundred dollar mark. Yeah, but I will not go underneath eight hundred, and that's usually for like Dude. a respray and a scuff and put it back together. And you're fifteen hundred dollars start, no questions asked. Yeah, and only because like one day, <laughs> I'm telling people how to get cheaper prices right now. But one day, if if it's not in demand demand anymore, then I'll have to lower the prices to actually make it there. But right now it is, and there's yep. people that want it, so. That way, I don't have forty five helmets on back order, and I'll, I have to make it harder. Yeah. Same thing. I was like, I, I get dudes that want to pay for rush orders, right? Mm -hmm. So if I was to say, okay, if you want to skip the line, it's five hundred bucks. Every one of my customers would do it. Yeah. So it has to be something absurd, so that they were like, ah, it's not worth another thousand dollars. Yeah. Right. But I had a dude want to skip the line and said he paid double. This first five thousand plus dollar helmet I ever did. Jesus. Yeah, I eat good off that fucking helmet. Oh, shit. <laughs> the uh, Marilyn Monroe. Marilyn Monroe helmet. It wasn't even that hard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. And, and again, that's uh, the hard part. I wouldn't of it, have right? charged him five grand if he, he, he was a difficult person to chase down to get paid. Yeah. And it got to a point where I was like, all right, I'm charging you. Because I was only going to charge him the, uh, the rush fee. Yeah. Um, but then it got really complicated to getting paid. So Is I was he a local like, guy or? Not necessarily, but he was local whenever I had to get paid. Yeah. And it was still hard to get paid. Yeah, so. exactly. Well, and that's that's the hard part is, you know, getting, I think there's a lot of customers out there that have the hopes and dreams of that $2,000 or whatever helmet, but only have a $500 budget. The, the other thing is there's painters out there that dream of one day getting paid to do a $2,000 helmet. Yeah. And I'm stoked that, you know, there was a point in time where I was dreaming of getting a $10,000 bagger paint job. Yeah. And... Once it happens, it's like, fuck, that's a lot of work. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Charge more. But no, at the same time, it's like. And then you sit goals. back and go, well, I, I should have charged more for that one. Well, it's like it's goals, man. If you set them and you start hitting them, you know, one day you're like doing what you always wanted to do. And it's like, fuck, yeah. Like, yeah. You got there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's, a, again, I think going to be this, the telltale of what the performance bagger craze is going to be is how much guys are going to be willing to spend you know the good after, thing about after the six thousand dollar front end and yeah. the you know well the paint the the paint is the one thing that matters the least in the performance right but it's the only thing that sets them apart from each other yeah right so the other thing about it is like at the same time like i don't want to like you want to just do a random paint job with the guy that's local and give him a chance like that's dope too but at the end of the day, like we're all going to be looking at these bikes in the future and there's going to be, there's going to be those ones that stood out above the rest. Yeah. You know, maybe like your bike is now, or maybe Hawkeye's bike or Insta having Kyle's road King. Like those bikes are going to kind of be the definition of what this whole movement was. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that's, and that's where that's the, that's it. You know, Steve Chamberlain's fucking just turquoise flaked bike. Sorry. Burping, like well, it's, it's got those sweet Monty Roach and Lucky Strike designs. There's a story behind graphics. it. There's a story behind that bike. He hit a deer. Yeah. He went to Sturgis. He partied. He got striped up. Well, so whenever your buddy was here and we talked about the hat thing, mm -hmm. that happened in Sturgis with all of us at Monty's tent. And um, so, so Steve wanted just, I think, the conversation went like he wanted something pinstriped on it real quick. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, like me, Ben, Steve, we all showed up and started having a good time with all those guys. And, uh, you know, the hat was brought up. And I think yeah. there's still a video somewhere out in the world of, of us doing this. We got some poor bastard off the street to pick what 
got painted on Steve's bike. Yeah. So Monty and myself, and I think even Poland might have had, had a hand in the, the graphics that are on that yeah. bike. Cause it was like a, like I said, the, the solo or Dixie cup graphics, but uh, I had painted a deer on the back mm-hmm. and it says nailed it. And then like his arms are all blown out and like yeah. all crooked. And there's like a puddle of blood underneath of there. So uh, there was, a, I think, about a dozen of us that like wrote on a little post-it note, you know, what we think Steve Chamberlain should have on his bike. And we all put it in a hat and had a stranger pull it out. And the, the deer with the nail that got picked. So I painted that on his bike. Yeah. And then uh, now that's kind of become a tradition at all the bike rallies that like we all kind of get together. Because that's where the, uh, the fat wop cat came into play dude that shit was so good so so yeah that was daytona though right yeah that was daytona so so. ben so uh ben got a fat juicy wop on his yeah so so we all know what wop is right you know thanks to his instagram i don't think he did i I think he did if not i think it's either monty or myself might have had it but that was actually on ben girton's wife's brand new lowrider Oh, shit. And that was the factory fairing that comes on those bikes before he got the, the Memphis shades one put on. Mm-hmm. So again, she had the, the solid color bike. Cause we even did this in uh, uh, the V twin visionary show where Ben got the, the helicopter and all the pinstriping on his back fender. Yeah. Which did you ever get that story? Yeah. That, yeah. We got that from uh, somebody uh, from Daytona, right? Yeah. Not Daytona. Um, uh, the V twin visionary thing. Yeah. Cause poor Whose Instagram. Is it on? Uh, like I said, it might be on Monty's or it might be on Ben's. I don't know. I know I saw it, but if not, I could send you a picture, but, uh, so, so poor Alyssa, who is fantastic. And she's, she's Ben's wife. We, uh, kind of drew out of the hat that she was going to get a fat wop, a P H A T wop. And then, uh, I drew a really fat cat uh-huh. and it was like wet looking. <laughs> so, so she has a giant fat cat on the, on her fairing. That's awesome. So, cause why not? It's kind of like, you know, painting dicks on everything. Every painter paints dicks on buddy's bikes, right? No, we don't. I mean, oh. <laughs> <laughs> wink, wink. Yeah. Yeah. So, because like to have uh, you seen the picture of the the lucky cat I did for Ben's performance bike? Yeah, the recent one, the 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 uh, Asian looking cat. Yeah, so yeah. it's all gold leafed and all done up, but it's sitting in front of a bowl that says "Send Nudes." Yeah, and it's N O O D S, and it's eating noodles. And uh, so, I see what you did there. Yeah, exactly. I, I thought it was <laughs> clever, right? So by the way, the uh, pho sucks. <laughs> go what are you talking about? Pho, pho's delicious. That was, that was a good story in Daytona where he tried to get me and Jay to eat pho, and it was the grossest. Uh, it was pho thi- it was, No, it was Thai food. It wasn't it was even pho. Food. Yeah, it was Thai food. So, okay. Have you had Thai food before? I mean, we got a pho noodle in here yeah. in Waxhatchee. It's not the same. No. Pho, pho's, pho is Vietnamese. Pho? Pho, yeah. It's so it's not pho, it's pho? pho. Yeah, pho. So, oh, that's already been nice. Exactly. So Thai food is delicious when it's done right. And it was okay. It wasn't the best. But these guys felt like I fed them poison or some shit. So they will never let me live it down ever that I like Thai food and they don't. You got to experience new things. Exactly. Like, do yeah. you guys in Texas not have Thai people? I mean, we've got a little bit of everything. I mean, I could get a taco every five fucking feet at you know, in Texas, it seems. Oh, I mean, you'll get the best tacos here. No doubt. Like, I'm super pumped for breakfast tacos tomorrow. We're, we're uh, who are you going with? I, I have my, my best friend. I'm, I got to do some work in town, and he said he's got, like, oh, the best taco it. joint over by the airport or some shit. Where did you say he was at? Uh, Addison. Addison. Okay. Yeah. That's a real nice little part of town. Yeah, exactly. You know, but, I mean, again, where's the Thai joints? You know, Thai's, <laughs> Thai's delicious. There's, like, a... It's uh, spicy spaghetti. I can't remember where this is at. It's, not spicy. it's either. It is. It's delicious. Maybe Jace will know, but isn't there's like a whole fucking uh, Asian like block? It's got like a whole strip of places that's all Asian and even where? a market place th- in Dallas, like in the Arlington area. Oh, do they got that everywhere? Yeah, they? Yeah, Pittsburgh, yeah, a, like, Chinatown. A, oh, really? Asian like culture seems to kind of click up and like do all their businesses in, in like a little community. You know, same thing like uh, like. Hispanic. I've never seen no 
Dude, you go to Royal Lane in Dallas, there's massage parlors and noodles. What? Huh. Why haven't you taken me there? Like I, don't, I, I don't even go there. Yeah, I mean, I can get a, dude, you know. the scariest people are I'm done with are massages, Asians, dude. but, like, I'd fuck up some noodles. Dude, it's like, I'll go fuck around in the hoods of the hood in Dallas and feel fine, but... Asian like hoods are weird, dude. Like that shit is sketchy. I mean, I feel like all those they dudes do is- cut their fingers off. What? Yeah, just like to like I fucked up, bro. Here, here's my fingers. <laughs> they cut their fingers. <laughs> yeah, dude. You ever seen like a uh, like Chinese movies or Japanese? I don't know. Uh, well, I don't. I don't know what kind of movies you guys are watching. I don't uh, know. <laughs> that wow. Movie. Are you going to make Zax cut like a finger off if he fucks up another helmet? <laughs> you just be Santa with nubs. Nubs. <laughs> so so back to my Thai question. Have you ever had Thai food? I don't know. Yeah? Maybe. All right. I'll have to find like a good Thai joint in Dallas and just like make you guys Ben sent the picture. Fat Wop. You seen it? Yeah. Here. Is the camera on this one? It's on. Um, yep. You see that? <laughs> 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 so so yeah so I, I and god bless monty roach who who is a fantastic pinstriper and uh, a good friend also in the performance bagger world he uh pretty much just let me bum out of his uh his tent for yeah. for a while when i painted that fat wet wop of a cat on her fairing and she had to spend the rest of daytona riding around with that on there <laughs> so hey i think that was pretty cool though i mean it's it's fun so we always have a good time whenever we're uh we're together I like how you do different stuff like that, like um, that red carbon bike, the uh, add to cart. Oh yeah! I like hey, you just you do different stuff like that. Yeah. Like, so that that bike there, um, the the group of guys in, in Pennsylvania that I roll around with, we're I don't know if like poor friends is the right word, but like we're also like you need a swing arm for that bike because you know you only get to debut that bike once. So the add to car kind of became a joke. Mm -hmm. And then, um, I was finishing up the bike and the dash was kind of the last thing to do. And, uh, I told Joel, I said, you know, we need to come up with a name, you know, like my bike's lucky number six, you know, Steve's bikes, you know, nine fifty one, And, uh, I said, you know, we just got to come up with a name. Well, I got super fucked up at night and I mean, was just banging Tito's like it was going out of style. And, um, I sent him a message and, and Joel sleeps like an old man. Like he goes to bed at fucking like eight 30 <laughs> and uh, it was like two o'clock in the morning. I'm like, Hey, I'm going to make your, your bike add to cart. And I sent him a picture of the, you know, Amazon add to cart logo. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was like, I'm going to just do this. And I was originally going to wait to, to do it until he said yes or no, but I was super drunk and I did it without him really approving it. <laughs> so <laughs> luckily, luckily it all worked out. It's like that sometimes. It is. It is. And, uh, you know, again, it worked out. It's officially known as, as add to cart. And, uh, like I said, it was just kind of a running joke between all of us. And, yeah. And even like, uh, Ben's bike with the, you know, send nudes. Uh, you know, we went to, to get some Asian food in, uh, Richmond and then that restaurant had a lucky cat, uh, painted on the side. And, and it was, uh, just made me laugh. And I was like, we should, Jay, we should Jay said, your fuck your dirty water noodles. See, everybody got, got problems with these <laughs> dirty water Like I said, noodles. I, we will be 100 years old, and you guys will never let me live that one down. No, the, the thing that sucks about that whole night is that we, we tried to do a drunk cast, right? That was something we talked about quite a bit. I do. We no, did. Wait, we did do that. But So originally in the podcast world, or when we started doing this, we did a, we did a podcast that we called the drunk cast. And I still have that one. It's perfectly ready to release. But I, I still to this day have not listened to it. I, it. I fucked up doing it because what happened was when I did that, that Daytona trip with you was the first time I ever bought that recorder. So mm -hmm. I was learning how to use it. Yeah. And so it recorded all funky, like where like one mic worked, one didn't. And one was right ear, one was left. Ear. It's it's totally fucked up. So releasing it would be like. It would be tough. Yeah. Right? I don't even care about releasing it. I just want to hear the shenanigans that we talked well, about. Well, me and you talked shit about a lot of painters. We did. <laughs> a lot of shit. Yeah. Like, Because we lot. just went to the Perowitz paint show that day, and it was a fucking joke. Yeah. Not the show, but the bikes that were in there. Yeah. They were winning, you know? And... um We had a, we, we had a very opinionated thing, and then Jetty literally... <laughs> there's three things Jetty did. <laughs> 
ordered 50 pizzas. He ordered a bunch of pizzas because the foe sucked, right? <laughs> it was all right. It was all right. Then he couldn't be still. He has fucking ADD, right? He couldn't be still and sit there and do a podcast. So he kept walking around the house. He was wearing his helmet and drinking his beer through his helmet. And he also had that bended fucking hat yeah. thing and was drinking off of it. So then at one point, Jetty walked around the corner with his dick tucked in between his legs. Oh, he was talking about that downstairs. <laughs> yeah. And I, I, I looked. Yeah. <laughs> I, let's put it this way. I think there is a picture rolling around somewhere of that. That's what I was telling him. He should have dropped one of the pizza boxes and, like, been over. Yeah. <laughs> is that one of those ones where he gets to, like, kick you in the ass, like, three times or something like that? I think so, yeah. Yeah, yeah Steve even just texted me. He goes, uh, I was there. Fuck that Thai garbage. <laughs> yeah. See, again. <laughs> They were there, but you should text them back. We had Thai food with Ben, and he liked it. Don't even let him front. Ben's messaging me too. Let's see what Ben's got yeah. to say. Don't even front. I'll I'll try it out with you, Jeremy. Yeah, Ben likes I'll Thai food. Me and Ben are on that same same wavelength. Shout out to my my PA boys and Ben. So, <laughs> what's Ben say? Oh, it he was likes di- Thai it food. It was different. It was uh, it was a Australian Ben. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, it's too many fucking Bens. We yeah. need nicknames. It, motherfuckers are earning nicknames at Camp Week. Yeah, you know. Like, I mean, I agree. I I, mean, I, I I pride myself that I've given at least five nicknames to friends, yeah. and I'm proud of it because sure. now I did give Jetty Black Jetty. You did. I did do that, but it was also your help. With a uh, whoa, black jetty. Yeah, wham, wham. <laughs> yeah. We, we definitely sang that super drunk. <laughs> and then uh, I, I gave Dragon his nickname. Well, no, no, he gave himself oh, his nickname, yeah. but I, I got him to change his Instagram. So. Yeah. Um, I call Ben my dad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Steve got SMFY because he's Steve motherfucking Yonkin. You know, so I mean, and then Mark Norton calls him Smithy. So Smithy. He's like, what's up, Smithy? I don't know how, but. With my name, no matter what, even since school or whatever job I've had, everyone ends up calling me Sax. Like that's fine. Yeah, I mean I'm cool with it. I'm gonna call you Usher. Shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's <laughs> where your goddamn dance moves come I from, dude. Get down. They, what were yeah. you talking about? Like you were telling somebody on your fucking uh, deal. You were talking. I heard you said you tried out for a dance show. Oh yes. Uh, so you think you can dance? You did that. Yeah, I did that. <laughs> shut up, you shut just, up. Time you out. challenged the dude that went to a dance competition. Yeah, you you tried out for a think you can dance. I straight did that shit, dude. <laughs> <laughs> there has to be video of this. I don't even care where you find it. There has to be video. I don't know if I actually made it on TV, but I got to like third round. What? Yeah. Yeah. No bullshit. I swear. Fuck. So I remember. I'm gonna have to bring I my remember, game. Now. I remember real distinctively, like me and all the homies were down in Austin because they had a, uh, they had a, a Easy Rider show that was like the last run of the whole Easy Rider show. And they did it in Austin. It was a flop, but I had a great time down there. And Saxon last minute showed up with my brother, and of all of us, like Saxon and Jesse are kind of the younger dudes, um, and we were all at Sixth Street partying. And fucking Sax and Jesse, Jesse can't dance, but he was trying. But Saxon's out there fucking pop locking and doing fucking sea, <laughs> like, sea walking. And, <laughs> and, uh, and it was fucking like, it was fun to watch. Like, yeah, it's my boy. It's like, like I said, we <laughs> look, I He's don't need to us. do that. He's with us. Like, hey, look, you know, if we got a dance off, like I got my dance off. I'm if starting you, to regret my dance challenge. Now. If you want to fight, like we got Dragon over here. He'll body <laughs> slam your ass. You know what I mean? Like we have somebody for that. Yeah. Wow. So so you got dance, paint, dragons, the the body slam guy. Yeah, yeah. I feel like Jetty would probably try to body slam some motherfuckers. Jetty, I want him in front of me. <laughs> like I don't even want to fight nobody. Yeah. I just have Jetty Cloud, there. Like yeah. crowd control. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah. Jetty's a good dude. He's just he's inconsistent. One day he's riding bicycles, and the next day he's riding baggers. Like you need to, you need to, you need to pick fucking two wheels, dude. Yeah, I don't know. I tell you what, riding with Jetty to Dallas. Yeah, holy fuck, dude. So when I first met Jetty, like he gets fucking down. When I first met Jetty, Jetty was like super on the uh, like health thing, which he still is. He works out. He works his ass off, but he rarely would drink. And now it feels like he's trying to get fucked up. 
all the time. Yeah. And I'm like, yo, like, when'd you turn this new leaf over, dude? Yeah. Cause it's kind of fun, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Jet, Jetty's a freaking riot. Like, we, we had a blast in Daytona this year. Watch that motherfucker just take a white claw and him and Chamberlain. The fact that, uh, the fact that, um, um, uh, Joe Kid made Jetty made Joe Kid's list. <laughs> what on the you, you didn't listen to the Joe Kid podcast? Where uh, he, he had he he came in with a list of people that he wanted to give a shout out on the podcast, and Jetty was on it, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, I was like, like, oh John, shit, yeah, yeah. Jetty 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 goes hard. Well, he he does. Like I watched him and Steve Chamberlain do shotguns of uh, white claws, which. I I don't fuck around yeah, like that. Gay. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I drank about ten, I and mean, I had the raging headache from hell. But they would hold them, and they were pressing their thumb through the can like goddamn Neanderthals, monsters. Yeah, I was like, "What the hell are you doing?" They're like, fuck. "Boom!" So yeah. I tried it, and I cut my thumb all the fuck. I was like, <laughs> "Fuck you guys!" Like I ain't, I ain't, I ain't playing. Can I just like drink that. beer normally? Yeah, like can I just open this and sit here? But, yeah, like Chamberlain's all about that shit right now. Like we did the. We did the uh, anniversary party. Like he was in here, uh, white uh, doing shotgunning, mm-hmm. and um, is that how you say it? He was shotgunning, mm-hmm. shot shotgunning. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but no, I shotgunning. mean, dude, that that's what's awesome about all this is that there's like this this huge fucking like world of dudes that are all different, but they all fuck with each other, and yeah. everybody's equally extra, if you will. Yep, and um, we're all good with it. Yep, we that's have why I like party. That's we why do. camp out week. <laughs> camp out week. Hashtag FLC4. Yep. Yeah, dude, I'm fucking stoked, man. It's fucking camp out week. Yep. It's like Rumspringer for bikers. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good way to put that. Yeah. That's a good way to put that. And if you haven't watched, dude, go home tonight and watch Sex Drive and tell me about it tomorrow. We'll talk about it on one of the two podcasts we got to do tomorrow. <laughs> dude, if, you, if that happens, I, I will come back just to talk about that movie. So uh, I'm doing the podcast tomorrow morning with uh, Natalie and uh, Aaron from the De Haven that they do that clothing mm-hmm. thing, and so I feel like I got to be real responsible on that one. Yeah, I feel like they're I professional. Like they're professional. Like yeah. I don't know if I can say like fart jokes and stuff on yeah. that one. We're, not we're that we do that, not, but not professional. But then when Mark is coming in later on the day, we're definitely going to um, we're going to see who wins the shit talking battle. Yeah, and uh, I, I'm hoping Mark is bringing his A game because. Uh, you know, <laughs> I just can't wait to to roast him on oh, shit. <laughs> a podcast. <laughs> and then we're all going to bike night after? Dude, yeah. bike night tomorrow night is going to be pretty wild. It's going to be yeah. lit. Lit. And you know what? There could kids. be eight dudes there. It's going to be fucking wild. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there will be way more than that. Yeah. Yeah, I, I can't wait for this bike night thing. So, Well, you know what's awesome is that, like, the bike night. Uh, so, for, for one thing, the bike night... Tomorrow is our four year anniversary of the bike night. Okay. So it's also it, it the dudes I met at the bike night is what helped start the camp out. Right. So it kind of coincides with each other. Like in twenty eighteen we started the bike night and then I met these guys and we did a camp out and then twenty you know, it's been kind of perpetual going down the line. And uh so every year around April is when we started the first bike night and um now here we are, you know, in twenty twenty one. It's gonna be a party, man. Yeah, it's gonna be a good time, and it's uh, it's weird, because yeah. uh, it's just crazy, man, how much it's grown in such short time. Yeah, I mean, Saxon's yeah. been around since day one. So, I mean, obviously, we have a, you know, somebody who m- a lot of people know, and he's really known for his work and stuff, and it, it I'm known for my fucking. Biceps. I mean, yeah, I'm I'm only here for one day, Sax. Look at this. I mean, oh my boy, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's why people come to the yard. Yeah. <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> but but I don't know how many times I've said this on a podcast, but it started with just like eight of us dudes. Yeah, we call ourselves the Anvil Eight. Yeah, because the the bar we went to was Anvil, and it was like eight of us. It was a play on the whole first nine. Yeah, exactly. Right? And our buddy Matt, which you met earlier, he was here. He used to like do the. He was that. He was our quick Photoshop dude for a phone, right? So he like did the the the, the uh, what was the uh, the warriors where all of them yeah, are like the lined up, but uh-huh. he put our faces, all eight of our faces, on the different warriors, and that was like from twenty eighteen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so it's like you get a bunch of dudes. I mean, we're all from like different backgrounds, but the bike night kind of brought us together, and then 
you know, I've, I've said multiple times, like I was already traveling on bikes. I mean, you, you, we didn't know each other, but you, we knew of each other back in the big wheel days. Yeah. And, um, we were, you know, I remember it's funny cause, uh, I got to spend a lot of time with my buddy in NorCal. Uh, and I remember I would go to NorCal and we were always on Instagram. He was the guy that was always pushing Instagram to me. Right. I didn't really care about it at first. And then he was the one that kind of pushed me to do it. And uh, we were talking, I was like, Every time I thought I was doing the sickest shit, I remember I, distinctively I was flying to NorCal to paint bikes, and me and him would talk all the time about, we're fucking killing it. And I remember showing him your Instagram profile and going, <laughs> fuck, man, this dude's got like a 1,000 followers. He's fucking raw. And this is like 2015 or yeah. 16 and shit. And I'm like, this is bullshit. Like, he's so much better than us. And we're like, we have more followers. It's not fair. <laughs> <laughs> it's not fair. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that's uh, the one thing. Like, I remember meeting you for the first time at SEMA. Yeah. That was 20 shit, 16? Yeah, 16 was the, yeah. Because I think you were with HOK. Yeah. And I was with PPG. Mm -hmm. And I remember you had, like, the, the HOK button down and, you know. Had the, the shit was so gay. The tag and everything. And uh, I remember talking to you and having a, you know, getting good time. My wife was with me that time. Yeah. 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 And, uh, you know, two like-minded guys just talking about paint. And uh, I remember you leaving, and one of the PPG execs came over to me and was like, who who were you talking to from House of Color? And I'm like, oh, it's just one of the, the painters that I follow and, yeah. you know, like his work and all that stuff. And he's like, well we can't really have that, you know, where you guys talk together. And I'm like, fuck all of them people. Like, yeah. I'll talk to anybody that sprays anything. I could give a fuck less. And at that point, I was like, man, like, this is fucking cool. Meeting other people at SEMA from all the different paint manufacturers yeah. that paint whatever. You paint cool shit, you paint cool shit. Like, I guarantee I follow you if you paint cool stuff. I mean, same thing for me, man. Yeah. Like, I, I follow a lot of painters you know, simply because I think they're badass, and you know, like when I started doing this podcast, it, it became less about like myself and more about like finding people that did cool shit mm. to, to bring on here because I can only tell my story once. Yeah, you know what I mean. Um, but you know, in the paint world, like, and I've struggled with this heavily because I'm I'm a painter that's more famous in motorcycles. Yeah, you know what I mean, and. I don't think I'm the best painter and it's not even about being the best or whatever. It's just like, I think I'm good. Right. But I get nothing. I get no love from the paint world. Yeah. Because no, I'm not, does. I'm not like doing the whole fucking like, Hey, the, give me a filter. Give me a fucking uh, air hose. Give me like this jerk off fest of dudes that like, I try to tell these painters to have fucking dignity and stand behind, like do your value. You're valuable. Yeah. Like you, you have a skill and motherfuckers keep hitting you up on Instagram asking you about your products. That is fucking a commodity. That That is you having a skill that is valuable to a company, mm. right? And they don't want to pay you for that shit because you motherfuckers are running around SEMA doing shit for free all goddamn day, and you're wondering why you don't make any money in the paint industry. Yeah. Yeah. That was the weirdest thing for me. All my heroes in paint, when I finally met them and realized they're all broke. Yeah. I mean, I don't think there's really any painter in the world that really is a millionaire. Maybe except for, like, Dean Laux, but he paints, like, ginormous Prevost and buses and, I mean, crazy shit that I have no desire to ever paint in yeah. my life. But I don't at know. The, at the same time, like, why, you know, that's what I thought whenever I started meeting all my heroes in the custom paint world. I'm like, all right, they're all struggling in one form or fashion or the other. Like, well, why are they struggling when I've been hearing about these dudes through publications and, and ad campaigns for the last 10 years? Yeah. So they're doing shit pro bono, which is what artists do. Yep. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. Exposure. Yeah. Yeah. Air, air quotes. And that's the, the one thing, like, being in the, the corporate side of it with, like, PPG is, you know, the seeing behind the, the fucking curtain, you know, opened my eyes for a lot. Yeah. And, um, you know, whether it be product selection or, or whatever – and, you know, I'll, I'll say it right now and can give a fuck less. PPG, you know, whoever, Valspar, any of these big companies, they at the end of the day, they don't care about the end user. I mean, they truly don't. It's all about making money for their stockholders, and we're just the ones that do it. Yeah. And, um, you know, I've, I've gotten to the point where, you know, I have a lot of guys that whenever they found out I left 
and you know ppg meaning just separated they asked me what i would spray and i said really to be honest it doesn't matter what the paint company is it's based on who's going to service me the best what the price is yeah after that paints paint i don't mm-hmm. care if it's exalta valspar matrix sherwin williams i mean if it's yeah. intended for automotive you can spray ppg just as well as i could spray matrix mm-hmm. you know it, it doesn't matter but it's where you know what colors do they offer what you know the the yeah. intricacies of it is what kind of boils it down and um you know sadly it's it's just to the point now where all of the companies are just after the biggest buck that they can get the quickest yeah. like every company is but but i mean that really fucks us in the custom paint world a though. thousand percent like the the ppg Products side of are the not world. made for us anymore they're made for production line correct stuff so it's like doing a custom paint job in 2021 is is finding old products now that, mm-hmm. that are usable for custom paint that aren't as quite it's not it's it's like i've wholeheartedly believe that our industry as custom painters is going to get so dwindled down it, it's such a it's a booming business right like yeah. there's a lot of people want to get into it and it's a demand but it's still ain't the same demand as like fenders getting repaired and blended yep right and that's the thing is like people are paying for our services insurance is paying for the other and that's where you know the the bigger companies are are chasing that money but the problem is with this business right now is on that side the paint manufacturers are getting their hands just chopped off because these shops and kudos to them i do the same shit if i was in their position is they're going to these paint manufacturers going i do 10 million dollars in business what are you willing to give me off for me to use your product yeah so now these paint manufacturers whenever i got let go the highest i heard of a discount was almost 65 percent holy shit so the paint manufacturers aren't making as much profit so how do they do it well now they're getting rid of products because they don't have to manufacture them anymore they're getting rid of personnel or training centers or whatever to to so, sub that so in. the argument that i have is why the fuck hasn't house of color stepped up and become the dominant force in the custom paint industry problem why is, is who owns house of color exactly so why yeah. you know and unfortunately like i i'm 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 fucking myself by even having an opinion about it. But at the same time, it's like, you know, Matrix and House of Color are the same brand, right? Valspar, Sherman Williams owns Matrix, Valspar, uh, House of Color, all this. But it blows, like, and, and, and I look things through social media, and it blows my mind how out of touch with the custom paint community they are. Mm-hmm. And I'm not even in touch with the custom paint community because it doesn't, serve me anything yeah like i've had i used to bring a lot of painters on this podcast at the beginning because i thought it was important to bring it on guess what nobody listens to fucking painters yeah right and unfortunately like you they listen to you they listen to schultz they listen to the the people that are motorcycle connected but if you're not like like bugs yeah amazing painter one of the ogs in the game Eh. right yeah it's fucked up hot dog yeah it sucks because these dudes are fucking so talented and so amazing but yeah and that's the the hard part and and again i i saw both ends of that spectrum being in the corporate section of it because like from their perspective is look at like warranty claims yeah they don't want to have you know that customer that has to put a warranty claim in for a hot rod or a motorcycle that i just shelled out 10 grand for the premium of premium that you're pushing a lifetime warranty on me yeah and going above and beyond what millage recommendations are and you know end all use because let's face it our custom paint breaks every single rule that's what it is that, it's the chopper every, of the paint world exactly that every paint job has a, a problem like I, I told customers even when i worked at ppg and my boss hated that i would tell this is that it's a miracle paint works the way that it does when guys like us get it mm-hmm 35 mils ain't shit for a custom paint job, but 35 mils of product is tripled, even quadruple what your average body shop repair is. Mm -hmm. So like PPG put in a thing where they will not warranty anything over 10 mils thick. So now let's say I do have a problem on that soft tail that I metal flake candied cleared four times sanded and all of it's still Deltron, which is the premium line of PPG. Yeah. 
F you, this is the first time that it's bike's been painted. I want a warranty because it's cracked or failing or, or whatever. Yeah. Well, in their eyes, and I completely understand it, they don't want to get in bed with that because we do break all the rules. But at the same time, guess who wants to be a custom painter? It's that 16-year-old kid coming through Votech. I never in a million years said I wanted to bang fenders and blend pearl whites on a Cadillac. Fuck it. I wanted to, let's paint some like hot rods and let's put flames on everything. And, you yeah. know, flames so, gets you laid, bro. Fuck yeah. So they kind of need the custom side of it to promote that stuff. Cause just like you said with the podcast, you look at like PPG's Instagram, they got a picture of like a body shop with a car in it. And then they'll have a picture of something hot dog painted or I painted or whatever. There's 20 likes on this. There's 200 likes on that. Yeah. You know, so it's, I'm kind of fearful for the custom paint industry in another five to 10 years. I am too. And it's, I don't know what this is. That's why I'm taking pictures. Fucking a, like I might have to start dancing like fucking sacks over here. Some shit. I'm going to give me like a six pack. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. Where's, where's my snare? You know? (laughs) So, well, it it, it is scary, man. Like, and and that's one of those things, like, uh, I've been approached to do classes and, I want to do a class. I'd love to teach, but I don't know if I can. So that's kind of like that weird thing to take the, uh, take the, um, I don't want to tell you it's $600 to come spend a couple of days here at the shop. And I don't know if I can provide. Yeah. Right. That's a scary thing. But with the custom paint industry, it's also like, I don't really foresee the industry being fair yeah. in the, in the long run. I don't think that, all these people that are chasing the talents of, of being a painter, airbrush artist, or striper. I think being a pinstriper, you're kind of like, you're making yourself, you're giving yourself enough of a of a quick money thing that, like, you, you can kind of, like, ride the wave better. Yeah. You know? If you're an airbrush artist right now, like, dude, it's not, the, it's not an airbrush artist market right now. Yeah. You know? Um, if you're a graphic guy, you could probably kind of ride the wave pretty well, too, but... I'm I'm really scared for the industry because I don't think as a as in the paint world like there's much incentive to do it. I mean, I'm I'm almost 20 years invested, almost. I in paint in general, I'm over 20 years in mm-hmm. custom paint. 04 will be my 20 year mark, right? And most people that I know that I've always admired have moved on to tattooing. They've moved on to other things because there is no there's no retirement place for a custom painter. Mm. There's no, there's no fucking pot of gold at the top of the mountain. There's nothing other than like more work. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And like we talk about inflation, right? So like a bagger. And when you say $20,000 paint a bagger, 90 per, 99% of the people out there are going to be like, oh, that, I, that's, I, that's exactly what I paid for the bike. Yeah. Why would I pay for that for paint that's going to get chipped and, and fucked up over time? But how do you, like, you're, you're, you're getting priced into a world that's not even obtainable anymore. You have to do shitty work with shitty materials to be affordable at seven or $8,000. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yep. It, it's not a win-win at yeah. all. And, that, and that's the hard thing because, like, you know, let's face it. I think anybody in this art side of the world... None of us have a retirement plan. None of us nice. have a 401k. Like I, I've kind of reserved myself that I'm probably going to die in a metal box with fans running and there's going to be a paint gun in my hand and no one's going to know I'm Someone's dead. Someone's going to be like, well, who the fuck's finished this paint job now? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be that customer knocking on the shop door going, are you here? Yeah. But the problem is, is nobody's going to know I'm dead because my decaying body is just going to be sucked through furnace filters, you know? But the the hardest thing is is the fact that, and again, this kind of goes back to that that mentality of corporate versus, you know, where we're at now with guys like us that create art, is I think there's always going to be a demand for that because most humans want to separate themselves from the other, yeah. right? And whether that be we're the, the car Gucci, you drive. We're the Gucci belts of the, uh, of the motorcycle. Exactly. exactly. So, so whether it's the car you drive, the bike you ride, whatever, we're always trying to be different than the next one. Mm. So I think there's there's going to be a point where, like you said, you're not going to see the, you know, Joe Blow's custom because he won't be able to either afford the product to put on that bike or he's going to do such shitty work that it's going to put that 
sour taste in that customer's mouth and either a guy like you or me are going to have to fix it. Yeah. You know, and like I'm already dealing with that at home now because in Pennsylvania, there's a lot of those like backyard kind of, you know, custom painters that do good work. But after a year, guess what all of a sudden happens? Because they're using, you know, Omni. Hey, yeah, uh, Acme brand fucking paint, right? Yeah. So, you know, it, it, it's it's going to be weird. And, and like I said, I, I don't know what this is going to look like here in another five to 10 years. You know, I mean, it's, it's, that's why, like, uh, you know, like I'm trying to invest in so many other things. And uh, because I, there was no love being thrown back, there was no it, it didn't show me there was enough money mm-hmm. in the custom paint industry to sustain a- adulthood. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like in your 20s, teens, even early 30s, like chasing like the skills you learn being a painter. You can apply that to the collision world and you'll always be okay. If you're a good buffer, you can always make a living. Yeah. You're a body man, you're a painter, you're good, right? But if you're a custom painter, you're an airbrush artist, you got to hope that that's in, in that, that's in, right? You got to hope that like it's in, you live in an area where people are willing to spend money and you're good enough. Yeah. Right? And then if you're a striper, you kind of, there's many different facets of the, of the world where as a pinstriper, you can just go to the local swap meet and stripe up some fucking shit or the, the hot rod show. And you can make a couple hundred dollars that day. Like, yeah, that's good. It's a good place to be, but it all takes so much time to learn. Yeah. You know what I mean? The fortunate thing, I think what, what carries the custom paint industry is that people want to, this is like a side thing they want to do. Like, hey, I, I'm a banker during the day, but at, at, at night I want to go in my garage and open up my fucking toolbox, pull out my striping brushes, and just, just pull lines on shit. You yeah. know what I mean? And to me, like, I get it. In that world, fucking being, trying to be a custom painter or trying to be a striper, hands down one of the best places to release creative energy and to invest in yourself. Mm. You know what I mean? But... When the apocalypse happens, what are we going to do? Hey, man, I can stripe the fuck out of this goddamn <laughs> this uh, tank. zombie tank. <laughs> yeah. Like, they're going to know who's coming down the street. Yeah. Like, damn, they got they got fucking lucky striking that fucking settlement. That's right. Yeah. That's right. That, that tank's going to have flames coming down the barrel and shit. I don't know. It's, it's Paint's going to have a whole new meaning of int- intimidation at that point. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Zombies like I don't fuck with those dudes. They got flames on everything. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and just, I heard those are forever. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> dude. I, if the if the apocalypse happens, I guarantee there will be a time where I'm going to put flames on a fucking Grand Cherokee with armor plating or some shit. You know, <laughs> that's, that's how that's going to work. Hey man, can I get some like a sweet skull painted on the side or some shit? Yeah, yeah, bro. I got gotcha. you. I'll, I'll take two cans of baked beans. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's how that'll work. Bake. Yeah, you got ammo. I'll take. And some I of need too. you to source out these ingredients right now so <laughs> yeah. I can make white. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Be crucible crushing fucking carbon and crap. So. He's got one last pinstripe brush, and then he's gonna have to kill the neighborhood dog in the settlement. <laughs> like I need his hair. Yeah, I can fucking make forty brushes off this motherfucker. Yep, exactly. <laughs> so I don't know. Maybe maybe that's what custom paint will look like here once the world goes to complete hell. So what's really wild is like as much like turmoil is going in the world how we've still managed to do well yeah you know? i mean we i sell a luxury man yeah i I, t- I tell guys all the time that i don't know like the pandemic happened and everybody got super worried and and whatever and i mean people were spending money like drunken sailors you know like i have tons of guys that bought bikes and the first call was to me you know yeah. or hey i bought a new helmet for you know the new bike or you know hey i got a side by side i need a new you know dirt bike helmet or whatever and i mean Drunken sailors, man. I'll I'll take it all all the fucking day long. Oh yeah. So you know, that's but. a good thing, man. Like it's 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 good. Like like I was I was saying this little clubhouse chat. We were talking about this magazine deal, and I was I was telling them it was like you know what, we're kind of the same age range, and same kind of level of uh, investment in our skill, mm-hmm. and we're ju- like it's like this like the the planets aligned. At our age and our ability, we're at like the top of our game, and this industry is taking place where performance baggers, performance Harleys, and we have we have the ingredients, and we're also the dudes riding the bike. So all these things align, and we we we've been doing well with it, right? Yeah. But how many of the industries have you been a part of, and myself have been a part of that we were never we were nobodies in that? Yeah, I mean, like the the car business was like that for me. I yeah. mean, like I've built 
probably at this point six SEMA trucks, you know, for you know American force. We wheels. get it, dude. You're rich. Yeah, okay. fuck, <laughs> not my vehicles. I just did the fucking work, yeah. right? So uh, again, the, the my buddy shop that I bum out of, um, you know, we do a SEMA vehicle. And the innovative, every, yeah, 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 innovative auto works in Wexford. Um, but like we were doing SEMA builds, you know, one a year. Yeah, and you know, I didn't get jack shit really out of it other than just having something cool at SEMA and, you know, maybe pass out a couple business cards. But, you know, it kind of goes back to that where it's not that truck or whatever wasn't built for me. Yeah. It was built for American Force to show off their new wheels. So they got, you know, kind of all the credit for it. But, you know, my crazy tribal leafed mini truck graphic that goes down the side of this 3500 dually that I had to paint in 20 days. And, you know, I didn't get jack shit out of it, really, you know, except a magazine feature. And yeah. magazines ain't around anymore. So, you know, it's just it's just one of those things that, you know, I will never regret getting in this business at any point. I mean, I still enjoy the fuck out of it and even more so now that I don't have the corporate bullshit attached to it. Yeah. And, um, but I mean, it's, it's definitely one of those things that, you know, I've met tons of awesome people like you and, you know, Schultz and all these painters that, you know, I, you know, could call up and count as friends. Well, yeah. I, I definitely say like the being in this thing is, uh, is good now for guys like us. It's been investing for the last 15 years. But I, I worry about the people that are getting, you know, that are trying to get into it now. I don't know what the, I don't know what our industry looks like in 15 years. Yeah. Those people that are going to those getaways now to learn how to paint or they're just finding you or myself or many other badass painters. I don't know what this industry looks like. And I, and I actually, you know, I really want to make the industry better. But unlike the motorcycle industry where there's no, huge corporations like PPG mm -hmm. and Sherman Williams kind of pulling the strings. The motorcycle industry is full of tons of smaller industries or yeah. smaller corporations, right? Where we have a bigger influence in, right? Yeah. So we can kind of change the course of how this is going to be perceived and looked and felt and uh, experienced. I have no, I feel like I have zero control in the way the, the paint world is. Mm -hmm. So as much as I want to make it better, I have zero, I have no idea how to do that to help make it better for the next generation of painters to come up. Yeah. I have no control of that. Yeah. And I don't think anybody ever will. Um, Cause especially like in these bigger corporations, I mean, let's face it, there is not a paint company on the face of this planet that's run by a legitimate person that understands paint. Yeah. I mean, they're all business people that have a degree and, you know, corporate business strategy or some bullshit. They don't know jack shit about the first thing to, to paint anything, yeah. house, car, motorcycle, anything. But they're making those decisions that affect us. Yeah. And like I said, there's, there's going to be a time where shit's going to go south. And what's next? Drug dealing. Dude, I'm telling you. Dancing like sex. I thought about it. Doing like some magic mic shit when when money was rough. Dude, shut the fuck up. Thought about it. I feel like there's one of those in Waxahachie. There's no strip clubs out no. here. What? No. How do you have a town this big and no strip clubs? This is the this is the God side of Dallas. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there's a God whole lot fair of and Christian. So so Kyle has uh, these awesome stickers that I got whenever I left his shop, and it says uh, Jesus is my co-pilot, and we're cruising for pussy. I was like, yeah, I've seen that in a meme before. Yeah, that's the Jesus I want to roll. Yeah, no, uh, Dallas is uh, it's it's dope, but I'm not a strip club dude. I, I feel like I'm out of that phase where like I just want to throw money at chicks. Mm -hmm. Like Pornhub's free. You know? True. Yeah, true. <laughs> and but I can see, just get it, it over with. Here's the problem: is is now that you're you're older, you can do things at a strip club that you couldn't when you were younger. Uh. I feel like younger, I could probably get laid faster. Oh, okay. Cheaper. Yeah. So other than getting laid, but like, so in Vegas, we usually hit up a strip club for SEMA just for the fuck of it. Right. Yeah. We saw a well off stripper who wasn't really the most athletic, we'll call it, attempt to do one of these like triaxle double oh she thought flared. she was from atlanta oh, oh yeah yeah like she, she thought she could do some shit and proceeded this to say magic city what yeah, is it called face plant into the ground uh yeah i'll do another one no hand him one. Oh, you and you have one yeah here i'll i'll, I'll take the one my man you got it. 
and uh, proceed to face plant right into the stage. Yeah. If I was a younger gentleman, I would have felt bad and handed her a dollar. So you took a selfie with her? No, no, that, that would have been the shit. I should have done that. But what I did instead was I was a kind gentleman that had some decent money in my life at the time. And I was like, here's a 20 because you need to fix your face. <laughs> So, I mean, you could help in that case, right? Yeah. You know, that's that's the way I looked at it. I Man, I I just, you know, like, every time I go to a strip club, I just, I look at the money I'm spending, and for what I get, like, the return on investment, it's just oh, not yeah. worth it. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I, I'm just like, I've seen, I've seen enough titties in my life, um... I'm not allowed to talk about titties. Oh yeah, yeah you better you better stop. Yeah, I've never seen a titty that was unconsented. <laughs> uh, that's a long story. Oh, I didn't really brought it up in the podcast. I almost got canceled last week. Yeah, this what? week or last week, right? Wow. You better watch out. We'll talk we'll, we'll talk about it off here. the podcast. Yeah. But th- that's the other thing that drives me nuts about the world is the cancel culture. I'm waiting for custom painters to start getting that because we're all loud, tattooed, fuck this, fuck that. You know, like I'm I'm just waiting for that to come through. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I agree. And that's that's the I think one of those things that this you know, world is just going to fucking a handbasket is that whole Are you worried? <laughs> uh, I'm Are worried. You? I was just waiting for you to finally say it. Yeah. <laughs> Sax is like I have I got the mute button on him. All right, there we go. <laughs> oh wait. <laughs> yeah, it, I mean the thing about doing a podcast, doing the, what we're at almost two and a half hours now. Yeah, we're at two and a half. So two and a half hours times a hundred and ninety. Yeah. Podcasts, right? All these, all these. I'm gonna say shit that I don't understand. You know, and that's just because like it's Montucky's fault. Like they <laughs> yeah. did it. <laughs> yeah. I mean. The whole idea of a podcast is to get real, is to be real and to talk about ideas and to share it. And um, not everything that's being said is like, like, I, I, I believe it now, but maybe afterwards I don't. Yeah, that's the that's the nature of conversations like, hey, you changed my mind about things. I had a very, very harsh opinion about the Bagger Race League. Mm-hmm. I talked to people in California and it changed my opinion. Now I support it. Yeah, I didn't at first. You know, and, and that's the thing is like, it was something new that I think they could have done differently to make it better for the business. Yeah, but you know, it, it's at the same time like I'm I'm kind of interested with that bagger racing league is is what is going to come of it. Yeah, you know, and but I'm sure you know Moto America has a plan for it once the whole COVID bullshit goes away and maybe making it bigger and better and. Hopefully, getting more of these parts companies to to start designing parts that are kind of you know safer for the road or yeah. whatever it may be because because yeah. let's face it that's what you know most racing has created is better safer parts for even the car business the products get better <laughs> exactly yeah. but I don't know it's uh, it's going to be interesting you know I I think and especially this performance side of the world it's these bikes are doing things that I think Harley or Indian have never even imagined yeah and. That's my only worry is that like these companies that are producing things like swing arms, like there's only so much you could do to it. And like I saw a swing arm on, on Instagram the other day that had so much shit cut out of it that like I looked at, I was like, that, that can't be safe. Yeah. Like it's, it looks super dope, but like yeah. I can stick my fist through like the center section of that fucking aluminum arm. Yeah. And, you know, that's where I think the the Bagger Racing League, you know, will test a lot of those parts for these companies. And, like, that shit sucks. Don't fucking cut your swing arm open like that, and your bike won't fold in half. Yeah, well, I mean, to that to that also point, man, uh, you know, the Bagger Racing League is going to definitely help perpetuate better parts for us to use. But not every dude is going to see the racing and think, like, oh, I got a street glide. I, I can go race bikes. No, like... I still think that what we do on these bikes is the biggest selling point. Mm. Traveling, setting your bike up to enjoy every different type of terrain that you're going to ride, but also traveling with your pack. It is the ultimate performance touring, which is what we need to start branding this shit as. Yeah. Because performance bagger has already fucking lost its luster. You know, everything's a performance bagger now. Like my ape hangers. 
because I rode, I, I beat Dale one day on the fucking straightaway at the bar. We left Buffalo while we were going to Applebee's, and I whooped his yeah. ass performance <laughs> baggers. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, like every, Everybody that wants to compare dino sheets. Yeah, like, I never even thought drag racing was part of performance bagger dumb. Yeah. You know? Bagger dumb. Bagger I, I, performance bagger dumb. And, and so now that we have this, like, small sect of uh, of bikes and this culture behind it, it's grown over the last four years. And now it's, like, this thing that's grown up to be big, and it's, like, this this focus point. But now everything else is, like, hey, I, I drag race. Hey, I, I have a 124 in my bike and a big wheel. And, yeah. and everybody's supposed to be in, included in this thing that's been growing up. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's kind of, like... The people that are arguing are the people that weren't around yeah. doing it. And and I had a, a very good customer that works in a Harley dealer ask me this. And he goes, what is a performance bagger? And, you know, I said, well, to me, a performance bagger is something that performs better than what it did from factory. And I said, that's it. And it could be your motor. It could be your suspension. It could be all that is a performance bagger. Yeah. But... What I do, you do, a lot of our friends do, I think, like you said, maybe it's performance touring needs to become the the new kind of wording for it because some asshole that just buys a bike, puts a 131 in it, and that's it. It's a performance bike at that point, right? It's got the stage seven or whatever the fuck Harley's up to now. But it's to the point where my bike still has a stock motor. I don't even have cams in it. Yeah. But my bike will out handle that 131 all day long. It's two over, big brakes, it's lightweight. My 114 kept up with all the guys I partied with in Tennessee. And those some of those guys got stupid motors in their yeah. bikes. So the performance side of it needs to become a handling, stopping, and not solely motor. Yeah. And and I think that's where a lot of guys lose that sight. And, you know, I tell guys all the time, I could give a fuck less if you got a leading edge 159 kit in there. It looks sweet, looks super dope, but can it corner? Can it stop? Can, can you it, ride it to California? Yeah, can exactly. you ride it to Texas? Can you even ride it in the fucking rain? And a lot of times those guys say no. Well, yeah. at that point, your bike sucks too. So Horsepower chasers. Exactly. And like I said, I've had guys show me dyno sheets, and I'm like, uh don't give two is shits. That the, is that the graph of your dick size? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, how much did that cost you? This much? So, I don't Look, know. I don't have a big dick. So, like, <laughs> this graph shows why it's important that I, you know, you, you acknowledge my dick. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and it's like. Performance uh, dick. Yeah, performance <laughs> dick. Yeah, like the, in Daytona, there was a, a guy that I watched. What kind of RPMs you got with that thrust? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, 167 foot pounds of torque. What's up? Yeah, but uh, I got 240 pounds of torque. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to lose my 240 pounds. But um, we watched a guy leave the Harley dealer there, that Ross Myers. Yeah, and uh, had the craziest set of like ape hangers I've seen because they were like he was sitting back like this and like had the like pull back ape hangers. Mm. And uh, I will remember this till the day I die. It says performance is a lifestyle across his back fender. And he leaves just rear tire blazing. Oh, I mean, dude, he's fucking stunning on you guys all day long. He did. And that's like, here I am just sitting at the red light. Just let the clutch out, go the direction we were going and then having a good old time. And I'm like, that dude probably goes back, jerks off in his hotel room and goes, man, those performance guys saw me do a sweet burnout and what's up? I'm like, dude, what the, the best fuck? thing is, uh, there's a, what was the ice cube movie where he's like a, a high school or a football coach to little league. And they said like, what are you going to do when you, uh, when you score a touchdown? He goes, I'm going to dance around. I was like, no, fucking hand the ball to the ref and act like you've had this shit before. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like to me, like doing burnouts, the burnouts, I, the last time I talked shit, I got a hole in my wall. Cause fucking rocks. Was at the at the place doing a burnout because I was talking shit about him, but performance bikes like having all this shit doesn't mean you show it off at a fucking on on Main Street in Daytona, mm-hmm. right? It's not about that. It's 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 like what I loved about my bike or the one thirty one was when me, 
King Tony, Justin, my machinist was going from, we were riding from, I think it's Hattiesburg, Mississippi down to I 10 to go through mobile and shit. And we were fucking just ripping. And yeah. every time somebody else would get in the line, we'd fucking drop them and race. But the whole time, like the whole group behind us, like that, to me, that is what it's about. It isn't about showing off to the, the bystanders. Yeah. It's about fucking with your boys on the road. It's so much cooler in my yeah. opinion. Right. Because when we get to, when we got to Florida Bama that night, which is where we were going to party that whole night. None of, we all Ubered to the fucking bar. Like, dude, we don't need our bikes to be people. Like yeah. there was a dude that hit me up, said that his paint job wasn't going to be done for the camp out. And I said, well, we'll fucking drive. And he goes, Oh, that's kind of gay showing up to a, a, the, the camp out with a car. I was like, yeah, if you need your bike to be cool, mm. You know, like, show the fuck up, man. Like, we all understand the whole bike woes that we have. Like, so, so many people, spikes weren't ready for this deal. Fine. Show the fuck up, dude. Yeah. yeah. Be there. Yeah, somebody named uh, Kaylin said. Kaylin? Jenner? Kaylin. Okay. <laughs> Kaylin. Yeah. They said, oh. uh, my Dyna has a doo-doo exhaust because my new exhaust didn't come in. Can I still get in the campground? I'll park it in the woods. And I said... Tell them no. I said you bring that. I said you bring that doo doo exhaust. I'll party with you. Yeah. What What does uh, Steve thing keep the fuck up? Yeah. Keep, yeah. So you need S T K U or or whatever. Show the fuck up. Yep. You know it doesn't matter what the fuck you show up on. Yeah. Do we push the whole performance narrative? You know. I mean, that's kind of what we do. But at the same time, you don't have to have all the nice parts and. Yeah. Whatever. Your bike doesn't have to look. Everybody doesn't have to look straight at your bike when you pull up. It's yeah. who you are. You show know? up and don't be weird. Show up and just actually show up and be weird, man. Fucking have a good time. Be yeah. yourself. Just we're all there to party. Yeah. And meet new friends. I mean, it's crazy to think about it. You know, four years ago, I only knew the people from my hometown and the somewhat around texas now i have friends all over the fucking country because of this shit yeah now you're sitting here talking to a dude from pennsylvania yes exactly yeah another painter and it's fucking badass dude and to be able to sit here and hear everybody's stories and actually learn about these people it's it's a fucking honor dude i I love it yeah i love this job i love meeting everybody i love the whole scene that we're in it's yeah, badass. Well, let's let's put it this way. I have all my paint with me in my bike. I'll take it to the camp out, and Jace and I will paint something on your bike. I already painted his fucking bike. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, like you painted you painted his bike, but there's a whole lot of red. So yeah, like we'll have to paint something. Dude, I was I was frustrated because he kept like so I was like, hey, get your bike ready, and then like I show up, and he's like sanding parts. I'm like, what are you doing? He's like, I'm, I'm gonna paint this too. He's like. Dude, this thing's getting ghetto as fuck real quick. It's like the the natural inclination of a lot of people is like, what can I paint and throw everything on the table, right? Mm-hmm. But contrast, you need that. You need that in a paint job. He's like, should I paint my crash bar? I was like, no. That's why I asked. I, I knew it was, might have been sick. You know how hard it is to paint cra- like yeah. tubes? Painting frames blows. Yeah. It sucks. Yeah. Like, I, I don't like it. He, he, uh, he sanded down his Luminar lip. You know the luminar lip on the uh, laminar, uh, quarter frame, yeah. laminar, yeah, whatever. Yeah, laminar lip. Okay. So it's a thing that velcros to your your quarter fairing, yeah. right? So what and, is that uh, supposed to do? So it what well, makes the, the windshield taller. It kind of blocks the wind over you. Okay. So I walked down the stairs. I was like, "Did you sand that?" And he goes, "Yeah." I'm like, "Show me how you plan to hang that up to paint it." Oh yeah, because there's no holes or anything in it. No, it's yeah. a solid piece of thing. So I was yeah. like. I kind of knew, because I've already dealt with this before, but I wanted him to stress out about it. Yeah. So I was like, y- y- figure it out. Let me know what you got. So so do you want a, a secret to the paint world? When it comes to mounting parts, zip ties, Velcro, command strips, fuck it, figure it out. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so I told him to go get the uh, the 3M little hooks. like the the Because where it Velcros to the thing, you can actually put hooks on it and do mm-hmm. it. But... To me, it was like, fuck, man, like, that's a lot more, like, I'm thinking tens. Yeah. You know what I mean? 
then you know like uh i i've i have a hard time doing uh frame rail covers yeah on the rear i, I think that frame rail covers need to match the frame everyone mm. i've talked to said they fucking love it yeah well you know people liked larry's goddamn chain guard but fuck that i like to be different i don't want to be like everybody so else. did you paint them red yeah it's fucking yeah, gay as AIDS. i don't even i don't even think i noticed I guess I did a good job. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Like, I, I've painted some like questionable <laughs> fucking shit on, on motorcycles. I'm just, like, I, I'm, I'm all about contrast. And I feel like when you have a rear fender and you don't have bags on it, if you have the frame rails painted the same way as the fender, it doesn't break the color up. So if your frame's black and you have the frame rails black, then it like breaks it up and it like looks better. Yeah. In my opinion. And it might be a subtle difference between like, you know, the looks, right? But when it comes to, like, aesthetics of something, the way it looks, at, like, put it like this, big wheel baggers are still popular to people in gas stations. So so is painting your frame rails fucking red. That's fair. So. Yeah. Did you do, like, the, the down tubes red, too? Because that's the only part you could paint without getting the motor out? No. No? no? Well, all right. Have you seen one of those people? Oh, yeah. Oh, I've seen God, those, those are my favorite. Those fucking people. Yeah. Like... Where's the mask job? Right at the neck. All the way down to the down tubes. It's like, you going to take the motor out? Make make it big ball status? No? Nothing? All right. But hey, I digress. What does that mean? What? <laughs> big baller status or I digress? Digress. You, you, you go down like you're supposed to be up here, and you've gone down to their level. I, I, I get the gist of what it means, but I just, like, I just felt like that was a big word to say. <laughs> Says the guy that used plethora at least what ten times. Dude, this podcast I, I learned that that word throughout the course of this podcast in, <laughs> in history, so I use it uh, a plethora of times. Fair enough, fair enough. And then Anything you two the said it together. I yeah. mean, kudos. Any of these other nerds out there? It's camp out week, motherfuckers. Yeah. Are there any other questions? Show me your titties for two <laughs> painting idiots. Pacific Loon says podcasts are going to be looked at in the future as such an important archive of the damn, human psyche. <laughs> read that far. Yeah. How fucked up Characters you guys were. and personalities that are shaping the scene. That's I hope fair. so. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. I think so. Um, but at the same time, there's a difference between someone listens to an entire podcast or a collection of podcasts from a person versus listening to a clip. Yeah. That's why I did. I thought about doing clips, like taking a, a, a part of our conversation and making a separate YouTube video. But I was like, man, like, I, I feel like it's unfair. I think that you should you should listen to the podcast. You should learn where that part of the conversation came from. I, yeah, it, it bleeds too much into yeah. one another, right? You know, I think is what it, it kind of goes to. I don't want people to... Uh, I want people to invest. Yeah. Like, when people invest, people have a better connection to what you're trying to do. So if you make getting this podcast easier to people like, Oh, I can listen to the cliff notes. Like, no, no, no. You're not the same as a dude that listens to all the fucking three hours of dumbassness. Yeah. Right. And so like, I feel like it in, in a sense, like, because I'm not, I'm not trying to play the YouTube game. I'm not trying to like make this, I'm not trying to make any money on YouTube. I'm just doing a podcast. If they want to check it on YouTube. Awesome. If not, I don't give two fucks yeah and youtube would demonetize me for that and they are actually so yeah and it's well, like youtube again is one of those places that you know if you're watching something on youtube and you get offended because someone says fuck or talks about something like come the fuck it's on. like my my it's like page, the people that report pictures my, of my chicks that are all, naked my shit is already like not for kids under 18. Yeah. But because you, if you say any bad word within the first X amount of time of the video, it's automatically demonetized. Yeah. It's like the, the when people don't like, when you realize like all the YouTube channels out there are fake as fuck. Mm -hmm. Like, and I'm not saying it in a bad way. I'm just saying like, they have to be something they're actually not to fit the YouTube algorithm. And I'm not saying that they're like bad people for it i'm just saying like they're not being who they are to fit the algorithm to make money yeah right it's unfair because it's a false representation of what is actually going on in our world mm -hmm. right it's like a 
it's the most like Christian fucking blanket of like, oh, you know, we, we wait till we're married to touch private parts and jerking off's bad to put your eyes out. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, you'll go blind. That's why Saks wear glasses. And he kept jerking off in his face, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really into coming on my face. Yeah, so. yeah exactly. <laughs> We're supposed to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> but no, that's what uh, I'm saying. Like, that's what sucks about YouTube. And like, and the more that uh, I wanted to play the YouTube game, uh, me and Sax been talking forever about doing videos. But to me, it's not about doing the video to get paid off the video. It's like, I want to make the video and be real as fuck. Yeah. yeah. Like, I want to be who we are and joke and fucking play around and, and being who just normal and, and maybe that's interesting and cool and and worthy of people's attention or maybe it's not but Either way we got yeah. some shit coming for y'all hey guys yeah. i wrecked my bike in this video links in the bio like check it out blah blah, blah. And it's like you're like fuck like okay now listen to the fucking 30 minutes of your dumbass dialogue for you to fucking like not actually wreck your bike and it's yeah. like or like, hey, I fucking camping now, and I'm a chick, and I just, uh, 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 and I'm like, what the fuck are you saying? Yeah, be a biker, bitch. You know what I'm saying? Fucking do something. I'm gonna get canceled for that too, for sure. Yeah, you done fucked up. Can, yeah, can you put a laugh thing on there? Oh yeah, hold on. See, it makes it better. <laughs> yeah. It makes it a little bit better. It does. It does. There's like a it's video sad. of this chick. Hey guys. <laughs> There's a there's this like so because Steve Chamberlain is a good friend of mine and uh, I really care about him growing his YouTube channel, um, but I've been paying attention because I also watch YouTube all day long while I work. There's been chicks who are the absolute worst follows I've ever had in my life. Yeah, but then they do YouTube videos where they face the GoPro at their tits. Yeah. And then they ride around with a voice thing, and all you see is the fucking tits bouncing. Yeah, or behind them, at their, pointed at their ass. And I'm like, this road is so bumpy, and like, I don't know if I really like this seat, because, you know, like, my last seat was better, and I think I'm going to go to this bar, and the fairing is not really blocking the wind. And so all you see is fucking tits bouncing the whole time, and you're like, and this bitch has 100,000 followers yeah. on, on YouTube. And I'm like, that is the worst fucking content I've ever seen. And so, like, I'm saying that. I'm 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 saying that mm -hmm. because there are chicks doing badass shit that aren't playing the game because it doesn't benefit them. Correct. And and it's the same with like Instagram and all of that, right? Like you look at all of the like top 5% of like Instagram people that have like the most yeah. followers are chicks that are damn near naked and weird dudes that I think want to be chicks. <laughs> and like those are like the top Five percent, right? And then you look at what they have for followers, and it's like thirty-eight million. And you scroll through their pictures, and it's just them in a bikini. It's them in, five photos, yeah, right? Them in them in Cabo, you know. And my whole life is on Instagram, yeah. like from the day I started this shit. I'm like trying to get where I'm at. And I'm yeah. like, yeah, like I had, I've had to put my whole life into becoming this thing, and it's not appealing enough. To uh, be interesting to fucking horny dudes on Instagram. So, so here I'm gonna give you the key, Jace. Yeah. Ready for it? You shirtless and an OnlyFans. Let's go in there. I mean, I mean, yeah. Why not? Think about it for photographers. Where's the best place to make money right now? Only for fans. chicks. OnlyFans. Yeah. OnlyFans. Yeah. Like, hey, uh, here's the deal. Uh, How I many people to you your only subscribed fans, to OnlyFans? Sex? And uh, I want to tell. Do you have any OnlyFans? You subscribe? I think uh, he does. Nah. Yeah. That's all right. Are we under five or over five? Nah. Okay. <laughs> nah. <laughs> we don't talk about it. Yeah, exactly. But as as someone that's trying to pursue photography, it's like it makes more sense to try to uh, be like, hey, uh, hey, uh, I, I, you know, I subscribed to your OnlyFans and, you know, I was trying to like really beat off to what you were doing. But, you know, like the angle you were at was not a great angle. So, like, here's the deal. I'm a photographer and I think I can give you some better <laughs> angles that might make jerking off to your fucking photos better. That's a good point. You might have to explore that a little bit. Oh, uh, that's what's going on. Fuck like, yeah. So, chicks that are starting to make real money with OnlyFans, like, they're paying photographers. That's where photographers are making money now with modeling. Yeah. Right? Is OnlyFans. Because higher quality photos, not not saying all these dudes are jerking off. I'm just a parody of the the situation, but um, it it's like that's where it's at, and so and it kind of sucks because like now you're literally going and being a photographer, trying to create trying to create art, and you're literally like taking pictures of some fucking chick 
waiting on her nipples to get hard. Yeah. To poke through the fucking, you know, lace or whatever. And it's just like, that's what sells. And it's unfortunate, but that's what, that's, everybody has to go that rank because of fucking creepy ass men. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yep. Fucking men, dude. I'm fucking over it. Yeah. I'm canceling myself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm cutting my fingernails off later. Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? I don't know. What are you? Are you gonna have to ask you what your pronoun is, oh, dude? Don't get me canceled with Montuckies. All right. <laughs> oh shit. Yeah, hopefully they're. I'm a watching. biker. That's that's my pronoun. Yeah, me too. What are you, Zach's? Touche. You shoelaces? Sure. Yeah. yeah. All right. Biker. Yeah. Can't can't argue that. Shoelaces. Hey, let's give a shout out to. Uh, uh, April 19, 1993, you know, Waco Siege, RIP, half in the day. Oh, that happened today? Yeah. Wow. 1983, so almost 30 years ago. Oh, shit. I watched that Netflix documentary. That was, that was yeah. it wasn't a documentary, it was a TV show. Well, documentary, no, what do they call it? Waco. Yeah, yeah, but there it was, was good. There was a, like a thing where it's like, it's not a documentary, but it's also not like drama. Docu-series. Yeah. You're welcome. Doc, you that was see. a great year. That's great. Why year. is that when you were born? <laughs> yeah. Fuck. Then you were born in ninety three. God damn it, dude. Yeah. What were the ages like? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> dude, the other day I was uh, at a local bar and they have one of those signs that say like you must be twenty one to sit here, and it has like the date, and it is the like first time I ever looked at it, and, and that 2000s. person is two thousands. Yeah. And I was like, fuck my life. What the hell? Like, that person doesn't even have to, like, card me now because they're just going to see the one. And I'm like, you're good. Yep. It's like, fuck. Gay. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Jeremy, good times. Good times as always. Are you ready for camp out week? I am. I am super pumped for camp out week. It is camp out yeah. week. Yeah. Rum, rum, would you say rum springer for rum bikers? Rum springer for bikers. Yeah. yeah, it's camp out week. Camp out week. Ain't, ain't no wing ding. Wing ding. <laughs> it ain't no fucking wing ding. Dude, I, I, I want to see the, the pit bike race. I hope that all... So we, my brother was going to play. His band was going to play. And that's the only band I was going to allow to play because I don't want bands at my shit. Yeah. Right? But uh, apparently his... He's on board, but his band members are... They think they're valuable. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> they're lame. We're not going to Oklahoma to play for uh, hundreds of people... And not get paid. It's bullshit. Like, and meanwhile, they're not getting paid to play for anybody right now. Yeah. So, and I was like, F them. Fuck them. Yeah. We'll listen to fucking Spotify, motherfucker. Fuck yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I mean, well, I'm, I'm super pumped. I'm pumped. Yeah, it would have been dope because I think his band's great. And they really have a good sound. And it would have been a fucking epic thing to have them play. Especially because Jesse, my brother, is part of the original camp out thing yeah and to see like what he's been pushing to happen but um you know apparently uh doing crackhead shit in the in the music industry isn't the same as doing crackhead shit as a painter to get your name out there yeah because i've had to almost suck dicks before <laughs> <laughs> like, hey let me paint your bike i'll blow you too man just give me the opportunity you know what i mean wow so, and that's one of those clips that would get taken out of you know context, context yeah, yeah. Mm. homophobic j sucks dick yeah I don't know. <laughs> anyway, is there anything else out in the like world? I mean, you've been typing away like a weirdo. He isn't talking shit for me. Yeah, yeah. Are you talking shit for us? Yeah. 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 All right. Good for you. Uh, Sax, see. you're wonderful. Where does? It's the first time I've ever that? met you, and you're great. Good to meet you too, yeah. man. Where's Jetty's bitch ass? Yeah, Jetty. Fucking. <laughs> he said some dumb shit. Yeah, of course. He doesn't have any smart shit in him. Wow. Jetty said, will there be any camping spots left? Do we have to pay in advance? Is he literally talking shit because I've already... He's trolling. He's trolling. He's trolling. Yeah. I said, Jetty, you have to pay me in advance, and you also can't sit with us. <laughs> <laughs> you got to sit at the weird kid's table in the lunchroom. <laughs> All right, well... Everybody follow Jeremy, Lucky Strike Designs. Lucky Strike underscore designs. I'm bougie like that. I, I kept fucking up thinking, like, is it design or designs? Because, you know, pronouns these days. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, Lucky Strike underscore designs. <laughs> yeah. Because you do more than one. Yeah. So. And so, like, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm stoked you're here. 
Yeah. You know, uh, it's always I, a good I, time coming to the, the fast life shop and podcast studio. Yeah. It's, I, I mean, I hope so. That That's the goal is to make it feel like the ambiance is good. You got the red light. Like yeah. may, maybe you're in a porno, maybe you're in a podcast. Nobody knows. That is true. You should get like those to like change color. They do. Bit. We have a remote and there's buttons. Oh fuck! <laughs> you mean we could have had blue the whole time? We didn't make it look like police. Look, hold on. Hold on now. So they're video lights. So meaning that like you can make it do shit that like. Hold on, I gotta get the fucking angle. Get the get the angle. Oh, oh shit. Jesus! That is an oh, epic disaster. Here, dude. We gotta get the fuck out of here, man. <laughs> this shit. End of the podcast. They're in the, the building. podcast. <laughs> Is over because the cops are. You got to get the angle because it's got like a a deal. Jesus, craziness! Look at you. I don't even think you had those the last time I was here. You want to see lightning? <laughs> you want to see lightning? Oh, it was a dark <laughs> night, and I didn't know what was going on. Please, yeah, please tell me you have like a, a lightning bolt sound on that. No, that board. I can do. Oh. I could do a raindrop though. The it next was a one. dark night. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> the, the next podcast we do yeah. needs to be in the dark with just the lightning feature. <laughs> I want to do. I want to do some podcasts where we're like, like, literally wearing a helmet the entire time. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. Like, just stupid Everybody's shit. Everybody's wearing a helmet. Yes, exactly. That'd be great. <laughs> Maybe the next and one. And bendy straws. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll do it on the next one. All right, guys. All right, buddy. Thank Pleasure. you. Pleasure. Lucky strike. I hope you guys enjoyed that podcast with Jeremy from Lucky Strike, one of the best painters in the game. Uh, yeah, I had a great time with him. I always do. If you want to check out this podcast in video form it is on our youtube uh, a lot of the ones we do here in the studio are on uh, youtube as well we do them live and then uh, we release the audio later on also uh, if you guys want to support this podcast even further than checking out our sponsors and want to get unreleased content you can check out our patreon which is patreon.com forward slash fast life garage uh, on there there's there's episodes we call cold snacks where it's just me and the homies talking honestly doing lots of drinking and uh there's some good stuff in there i think uh quite a few good podcasts that we've put in there that's nowhere else and for a dollar a month you get to get all that extra content um but don't be shy you can donate to what you like <laughs> anyway i really appreciate you guys checking out this podcast uh we're gonna be back next week with the De Haven, uh natalie and uh aaron and i think casey i think his name was casey yeah it's bad it's bad of me I should probably know those things but yeah i had a great time talking with them another podcast we did here in the studio and uh we're gonna be unloading the rest of the podcast that we did prior to the camp out uh this month so looking forward to getting all these out to you and uh, starting fresh with some new shit next month all right peace <laughs>